that away, love. I'll have another cup. And I'll have my milk in first. When you were singing in them clothes... Oh, go on. Well, did you have a mic? A what? A mic. You know, a microphone. Oh, no. Megaphone, yes. One of them things that you shout down. Of course I had a microphone, you daft tape. Wasn't it dark ages, you know? Only did a few years ago. Did you have all the gear, all the equipment? Well, not as much as nowadays. You needed more talent then, less electricity. You know, I never thought of you in show business. Hey, they were funnier than me, love, believe me. Have you got any pictures of yourself singing in that? Yeah, I have somewhere. I'll dig some out for you. Hi. Oh, hello, love. Is, uh, is Mrs. Fairclough in? Yeah, come in. Ta. <laughs> Morning, Hilda. Oh, morning. Now, I'm not going to keep you from what you were doing, but uh, I thought I'd better let you know. I've just been in the shop and the meter reader's in Viaduct Street, the gas man. So if you want to get off, just uh, leave me your key and I'll let him in. Oh, well, thanks all the same. That's all right, Hilda. Well, you sure now? You know what they're like when they can't get in. Send you one of them elevated bills. Estimated, you mean? Oh, do I? <laughs> <laughs> You're not far wrong, Hilda. They do elevate them and all. Mm. But if he's in Viaduct Street, we won't have left by the time he gets here. Oh. Oh, well, just me trying to be neighbourly. <laughs> Rita's just been telling me about when she used to be a singer. Oh, yes, confessing all her sins, eh? Now, Wilda. Oh, no, well, I don't mean you specific, but, well, you've only got to read the papers, haven't you, to see what happens in show business. Believe you me, Hilda, that's only the half of it. One of these days, I'll tell you what really goes on. And when I do, leave your curlers out, you won't need them. Oh, right, you're on. <laughs> in the meantime, thanks for your offer. Yes, <laughs> right, ta ra then. ta now then, now, that's a lesson learned for you. Never open your door to Ildrogden unless you're now to do for rest at day. Does she ever take them curlers out? Regular as clockwork, every coronation day. Now, less yakking. There's work to be done and schools to be got to. I thought you said you weren't in a rush. Oh, that was just for Ilda's benefit. I'd rather have an elevated gas bill than her rooting through my drawers. <laughs> Morning. You're cutting it fine, mate. Well, I'm not used to getting up late. I overslept. I'll work that one out when I woke up myself. Look, how about that piano? Here's the address and get your skates on. And put some juice in the van, it needs it. Now, are you sure someone's going to be there to help us? That's what Percy said. Now, come on. Well, are you going to ring up for us? Look, I've got work to do and all, you know, mate. I'm due at Baldwin's any minute. Oh, come on, Terry. Tell him I've got a bad back. Pollock's his name. Will he be in? <laughs> he practically sleeps here. Yeah. Hello, cleansing department. Uh, inspector's office, please. Mr. Pollock. Mr. Pollock, my name's Duckworth. I'm a pal of Norman Watts. Norman Watts, he's on your number two gang. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In with the air, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only uh, he's done his back in and uh, he can't get out of bed. He can hardly move. I can't say I'm surprised the way you people graph. In fact, I'd just like to say how much I admire the work you do. I mean, I don't know what we'd do without you. What are you doing? Oh, Piana. I'll see you later. Uh, no, Mr. Pollock, he, uh, he should be in tomorrow after a good night's rest, yeah. I mean, he's had it before, you know, and he struggled in. He didn't want to let me down. <laughs> right to you, Mr. Pollock. Thanks very much. Cheers. Girl, he's in hurry. Glad to hear it, and uh, what can I do for you? And don't be bashful. Gosh, first thing in the morning. I am at my best in the morning. Oh, you're lucky then I'm not. No, I uh, I was wondering, do you know how to unstick windows? We know everything. It's just, you see, my landlord's got round to decorating at long last, and he's stuck all my windows up, I can't open them. And you want me round? Oh, uh, well, I don't know at the moment. Um, can I tell you tonight? It's just, you see, the fellow who lives in the flat downstairs said he'd see to it, but I don't know if he'll do it properly. Well, look, so. you let me know, and uh, anything else is not too good at, just give us a shout, eh? You're worse than your dad, you are. Hey, don't tell him about your windows. You'll have him camping on your front doorstep. <laughs> I like your dad. <laughs> Do you? Well, watch him. Well, he thinks the world of you. He what? Yeah, he's always talking about you. <laughs> Dead proud of what you're doing. Says you're going to make it big one of these days. Yeah? Well, I'll believe you, but thousands wouldn't. Right, I'll uh, see you later. Then. Yeah, listen, uh, fancy a cup of coffee? Oh, I better not. I've, uh, I've got a lot to do. Some other time, perhaps. Yeah, great. Jacket and Watts, cheap and cheerful. I just don't understand him. Well, I can see his point of view. I can understand him wanting me to be married from home. Well, you can understand him better than I can. 
I mean, I'm just amazed he even said yes under any conditions. In fact, um... Go on. Now, don't jump down my throat, but it could be a ploy, couldn't it? So he could start working on you. What do you mean, working on me? Well, persuading you to change your mind. Oh, don't be silly. You don't think he will? No, no, I don't. I wonder how well you know him. I know when he's telling the truth. He knows he can't change my mind. All he wants is to make... Make it look right. Yeah. Yeah, I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but it does to my dad. It does to me as well. I don't like people talking about me. Not even me. You know what I mean. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. Oh. I will be uh, completing court two weeks, you know. Oh, it's a right business, this house moving, isn't it? I know, I mean, I've had some. Sign this, sign that, pay for this, pay for that. It never stops. Mind you, they were very easy going with the clay, that makes a big difference. Yeah, I bet they're glad to get rid of it. Uh, anyway, they seem to be settling in. Oh, I'm glad. They're a nice little family. You won't have so far to go when you do move them, will you? You'll be able to carry bits and pieces through the yard. <laughs> do you mind you taking the bread out of my mouth? Oh, sorry, love. Hello, Hello. 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 Can I get you a drink? Uh, vodka and toy, please. Right. Oh, Is that so. uh, Percy in there? Hang on. <clears throat> Morning, Phyllis. Yeah, it's Percy. <laughs> I could have sworn it were Phyllis. Thought <laughs> oh, no. hey. oh, you'd like to know we got that piano shifted OK. Oh, glad to hear it, lad. Glad to hear it. Right, can I get you that drink now? Aye, right, go on. I wouldn't say no to half a pint. Right. When you got a minute, Betsy? Thank you. I think it's boss's day off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's serious, then? Yeah, well, why shouldn't it be? What's Ken got to say about it? Well, he knows. I mean, he's not exactly over the moon about it, but he knows. Well, kid, I wish you luck. I believe it when it's happened, but I wish you luck. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I've just been to the shop. Maybe saw me with you. He's nothing sacred. Now, you don't know Alf Roberts, do you? No. Alf, this is Alan Bradley, Jenny's oh, dad. Oh, Nice to meet you. What are you drinking? Well, that's very nice of you. Uh, I'll have a pint of bitter, ah, please. OK, look. So what are you doing here? Well, they give me a job to do in Manchester. So I'm going to be around for a week or two. Oh, that's good. Are you going to stay over? No, I'll be commuting. But I thought it might be a good opportunity, as I was in the area, to see a bit more of Jenny. Mm -hmm. Kids. A bit of a problem, aren't they? <laughs> I sort of understand. It's not a problem I've had, though. Yet. Aye, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All the best. Anyway, I thought, uh, thought I might take Jenny out for a meal tonight. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. You know she played us up last time. Well, I think it's worth another try, don't you? Well, why don't you invite Reese along? That'll make things easier. That's a good idea. Now, what do you say? Well, uh, we'll see. So, is that what all the kerfuffle was about across the road? Yeah, more or less, yeah. I don't know. I oh, know. We get ourselves in some right messes, don't we? I wouldn't mind, but I like the pair of you. What do you mean? You and Ken. But you can't both win, can you? It's not easy, kid. Not easy. <laughs> Come on, stranger. And where do you think you've been all morning? I got myself a couple of great LPs. Great. I hope you didn't spend none of my money on them. No, I didn't. Here. Here's yours. Twenty. One. Fifty. Well, come on, look happy. I've done the job, haven't I? For once, yeah. There's no pleasing you, is there? All right, lay it on the line. What do you want? Look, I've laid it on the line more than flaming once, mate. Well, lay it down on the line again, because I've been doing some thinking myself this morning. The way I see it, you've got three alternatives. Ah, you can't have three alternatives, only two. But I can let you have three choices. <laughs> can I? Well, maybe I'm not as clever with words as you are, Mr Brain of Britain, but I know when I'm being taken for a mug. Oh, come on, then. What are three choices? Well, first off, you could throw yourself in the canal, couldn't you? Which would save a lot of trouble all round. Uh -huh. Or, if you think that's too drastic, you, uh could chuck your job in and come into partnership with me full-time. Or you could chuck your wages in the pool and we split them down the middle. Because if you think I'm carrying all this All right, paper... all right, you've made your point. So what's it going to be, then? I think that you should chuck your job in. Well, I don't, because they don't grow on trees. And we might be glad of that money on a bad week. But I think we should split it on a regular basis, because I think you've got a point there. Oh, well, one does never cease, mate. But why don't we get more to split first? How do you mean? Charlie Alcroft is retiring in a couple of months. Now, Charlie's a driver. He's also the boss of the gang, and he gets a good deal more than the rest of the lads. 
Now I stand in for him when he's off. So I, start, I think I stand a good chance of getting his job. Yeah, I So know. I'm going to go for it today. I'm going to apply for it. Don't forget that you've got a bad back. I'm not stupid, you know, Terry. I'll sort that out. Hello, here comes the secret drinker. I'm beginning to wish I was. Unfortunately, all I want is some silver, if you can spare me ten pounds worth. Only too happy, love. Save me getting the wheelbarrow out. <laughs> Didn't oh, expect well, to find you in here. No, a little surprise myself. Just felt the need for a stimulant after a hard morning's work. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. I'm only in for change. Um, can you spare me a minute? Uh, yes. Uh, rather negative, but, uh, I just want to say how much Deirdre and I appreciate your not asking any questions. Oh, I wouldn't want to presume on our friendship. No, but, uh, you are a friend. A very good friend. And you must have wondered why I, uh, blundered in the way I did the other week. Well, uh... I don't know how much you already know, but Susan and Mike Borden want to get married. And I've agreed, so long as she comes back home until the wedding. Oh, I see. I've also asked Susan to come back to the recorder I saw this morning. Oh, that's nice. She was enjoying it, wasn't she? Yes, yes, she was. But, uh, she hasn't, or they haven't agreed on either count yet. We're still waiting. But both Deirdre and I thought you ought to know. It wasn't necessary, really. Well, I'm sorry we've been so, uh, secretive. It won't go any further. I know. Emily, don't you want this change? Oh, dear. Thank you. I hope everything turns out well. For me? If it's possible, for all of you. Thank you. Bye, love. Can't go just yet. It's only quarter past four. Go on, we're quiet enough, and you want to get yourself all dolled up. Could have murdered Alf Roberts when he said, "Why don't you take Rita with you?" <laughs> Come on, you'll enjoy it. You sure you don't mind? Oh yes, I'm sure now. Get out of my sight. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, love. Bye. See you. Bye. Hello, Mr. Pollock. How was the tip? Like a garden of remembrance, Watts. Like a garden of remembrance. How do you think it was? It was a tip. <laughs> it's very good, that. Garden of remembrance. <laughs> oh, your back's better then. Oh, yes, thanks. I've got my landlady's heat lamp on it. It works wonders. Oh, good. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I just wondered, you see, because you know, like Charlie Alcroft retiring, uh, uh, any chance of being considered for his job? Because he's the eye stand in when, when he's ill. Oh, so it's promotion you're after, is it? Well, you're ambitious, hard-working, honest. You know, I wondered about that back of yours. I thought to myself earlier on, I wonder if shifting that piano has anything to do with it. And then I thought, no, it can't be. Because you called in sick before you did that job, didn't you? So it must have been somewhat else. Don't you dare deny it, lad. Not for one second. You've been copped fair and square. My youngest daughter, Doris, happens to walk down Weatherby Street on her way to school. And who should she see but this fella as works for her father umping this piano out of the back of a van. Well, now, don't say it wasn't you, because it was. She gave me your description and your name. And shall I tell you how she knew? Because when I brought her round here at Christmas to see you all, you were the only one who slipped her a couple of quid. That's how she knew. Well, I, I, There's not no more to be said, lad. Not by you, any road. I'll say what has to be said, and it's this. I have three other daughters all working in the neighbourhood. And all four of them are under strict instructions to keep their eyes peeled for you and to report any out-of-the-way activities to me. Right? I said right. Right. Now, you walk through that door and... Not yet! You walk through that door and you forget every idea you had about promotion and concentrate on keeping your job, which at this moment of time is hanging by an air. Do you understand me? Hanging by an air. Out! Oh, 
I give her a couple of quid. You think there's a chance? Well, I don't see why not. And if they do base me in Manchester, I can buy a house here. You can stay at your school, keep your friends, everything. I told them, I said, uh, this is not for me, you know. This is for my daughter. It's far more important than me. Honest, is that what you said? That's exactly what I said. Hello. Jenny? Oh, just a minute. Jenny! Who you, love? One of your boyfriends. How's she behaving? It's coming along nicely. Oh. I like your dress. Thank you. Well, do you know where we're going? Well, I'm told it's the best Chinese in Manchester, but we shall see. How are you with chopsticks? Can't even play it on piano. <laughs> You're going to say I did this on purpose. What's that? It's Gary. There's a band practice tonight. Oh, Jim. Look, I didn't know, honest. But we're doing this concert at school at the end of the month, and he's put two new numbers in, and we haven't rehearsed them yet. Look, can we go out another night? Yes, of course we can. Go on. Tell him you go to rehearsal. OK. Are you? Yeah. Well. It'd be a shame to waste that crispy duck, wouldn't it? Yes, it would, wouldn't it? And I don't feel like getting out of this into Miss Gruff again. Right, that's decided upon then. It's probably all for the best. These youngsters tend to put a damper on things, don't they? Really yeah. caught me on the raw, that did. Flaming Doris Pollitt. I was the only member of the crew to give her out for Christmas, and blow me, she shocks me. Well, that will teach you to keep your money in your pocket next time. And bribery doesn't always pay. Maybe it'll teach you that and all. I wasn't bribing her. She seemed like a nice kid. She sounds like one of the best. What I don't want to do, though, is lose me faith in human nature. Yeah, but it's hard to hang on to, though, isn't it? Right, heck it is. Uh, can I have two R's, please, Bet? I'll get these. He's had a nasty little shock. He's losing his faith in human nature. Still got some as at his advanced stage. When did he lose yours, Bet? He never had any. I had, you know, I'd let anybody pick me up out of my pram. I started getting cagey around about seven. By the time I was twelve, I lost a lot. <laughs> there you are. You've had a good run for your money, mate. Yeah. Here, when do you want me to come round and unstick them windows for you? Oh. Oh, he did them for me at dinner time, a friend. He's no friend of mine. Oh. Well, I won't ask him next time. I'll come straight to you. You see, you do. Evening, Kenneth. Oh, hello, Percy. That charming wife of yours is uh, looking a bit under the weather. Not her usual sparkling self, I thought. Really? No, I was in shop this morning stocking up foot week, which is my custom, and uh, that smile of hers was conspicuous by its absence. Mind you, I know why it is. Oh? It's what they call seasonal depression. You've lived through a long, hard winter, and you, you know, I suffer for it myself. You live through a long, hard winter, and you can't wait for spring to blossom forth in all its glory. Days pass, and it still doesn't come. You begin to wonder if it ever will. She needs all of that, that's what it is. Come to think of it, you look though you could do with one as well. You don't mind me talking to you like this, do no, you? No, no, not at all. Yeah. Only, you see, sometimes you don't realise what sort of face you show into the world. You are behind it, as it were. It's restless at the front that you're looking at it. Yeah. Yes, I see what you mean. I'll bear that in mind, Percy. <laughs> How much longer are you going to be? I'm coming! Right. <sighs> it's okay? Absolutely delicious. Now, come on, I'm starving. Oh. I saw my dad today. Oh, yeah? I'll tell you about it in the car. Fast asleep. Must have come home at a reasonable time for one. Oh, good. Right then. Home sweet home. Oh, sit down, have a cup of coffee. No need to dash off, is there? Well, I didn't want to leave it too late. Don't your we? family ever do what they're told? Right, go on then. Quick cup of coffee. Thank you. Meal. Yeah. Mind you, I wouldn't like to go Chinese regularly. I think once a month it's smashing. That steak cut like butter. Hey, what were that couple doing? There were an old Chinese couple and they were sat near a table. Do you remember? They're an old Chinese couple sat at a table. Hey. Oh. Sorry. Oh dear. I think the wine must have got to me. You'll be all right driving? Yeah, of course it'll be all right. Well, the weather's awful. Well, shall I ring the AA? OK, then you give them a ring and I'll make the coffee. All right.
Um, well? Well, it's not good. Heavy fog on the Pennines. Fog? Yeah. Well, you can't risk that. Look, I think you'd be better camping down here. Settee's not very comfortable. I know. But it's better than nothing. Are you sure it won't be any trouble? I'm sure. Right, then I will. Thank you. It was a coincidence seeing that other couple, wasn't it? I don't think they were very pleased. I thought, um... What is their name? Well, Susan? Yes. She's a bit young for him, isn't she? Well, there's more to it than that. Oh. And I wouldn't get very close. There's going to be eruptions there shortly. Oh, come on, Mike. For heaven's sake, I'm beginning to wish I'd never told you now. Well, can't you see what he's doing, eh? Can't you? I mean, first of all, he wants you living back in the house and he wants you working with him. And you know why, don't you? Because he wants to monopolise you. He wants you to himself every minute of the day and night. And don't you pretend to me that you don't know why. But even if you're right, he isn't going to win. He's not going to take me away from you. Well, if he tries, he's going to have a fight on his hands. Hi. <laughs> I don't look that bad, do I? What are you doing here? I stayed over. You didn't? On the sofa. Oh, on the sofa. Yeah, I was a bit done in when I got back from the restaurant. And uh, I'd had one or two drinks, so Rita suggested that I stayed over. She did? She did. Rita did? That's right, Rita, yes. You want a cup of tea? Yeah, OK. Have you taken one up to Rita? No. It might be worth a try. What's that supposed to mean, Jenny? Nothing. Did you take sugar? Since when he dumped it there, Dad doesn't know whether his own daughter takes sugar or not. I suppose it does. Does Rita? Does Rita what? Take sugar. I have no idea. You could always go up and ask her. Are you always like this first thing in the morning? Stick around, you might find out. <coughs> morning. Hello, love. Sleep all right? Yes, thank you. Did you? Not bad. My dad's got something really important to ask you. Oh? What's that? Do you take sugar? What are you doing today, Packin? Won't take long. No, you're right. It won't take long, will it? After all, you've only been here five minutes. Don't start that again, please. I'm not starting anything. It's just that sooner or later, your father's got to wake up to the fact that you're a grown woman. Mike, please. This is my last day. Oh, it's just that, I don't know, you're handing it to him on a plate. Oh, sorry, love, I've got to go. I'm interviewing a bloke for a job this morning. Handing it to him on a plate, Mike. Well, first of all, you're going back to live in his house, and then you're going to work for him. I haven't decided that yet. Oh, yeah? And what happens to me if you do? What? Well, when am I going to see you? I mean, you'll be working in the office all day, and at night time, in the evenings, you'll be in the house. Hardly lose much time for old Joe's soap here, does it? It's only till the wedding. Wedding, yeah. He's got 16 hours a day to try and talk you out, I don't. You know what I think about that. Listen, I know your father. I know what he won't be telling you. And that's what a good son-in-law I'm going to make him. Son-in-law. <laughs> that's a joke. What about me, eh? What? Well, just because my father says something, it doesn't mean I automatically go along with it. I can't think things out for myself, you know. And if we are going to be married, then you better start to realise that, Mike. Well, look, uh, oh, me. It's just, eh? Oh, yes, good morning, Hilda. Look, uh, we'll talk about this some other time. Yeah, OK. See in the wine bar, one o'clock, Mum? I'll be there. Right. I, uh, I hope I'm not too early, am I? Oh, no! That's all right, Hilda. We are getting used to it. I mean, since Susan moved in here, you've been getting earlier and earlier. It's a good job she's going, otherwise you'll get here before we got to bed. Oh my, eh? What time do you call this to turn in? 
You like hospital food? Yeah, I was only joking. Where did you get to today? I was in Chester by eight, then Runcorn, then Cheadle, and I never stopped for me breakfast neither, mate. Ah, great stuff. I hope Baldwin realises what an ace team he's got working for him. Team? Yeah, team, because guess what? I'm coming in full time. Eh? Well, umping that piano yesterday taught me a lesson. I mean, if I've got a fake an illness every time a job comes in, and then get caught and get me wrist slapped, well, we're getting regular work off Baldwin, so we can really go for it. So this is my letter of resignation. I don't believe it. It's me and you, kid. Dear Mr. Pollitt, it is with great regret that I'm writing to inform you that I shall no longer be available for the work on the round, as I am going into business on my own account. Yours sincerely... Did you get the touch of irony there? No. But it's kind of saying, like, stuff your job, but between the lines, you know. Look, if you want to say stuff your job, then say it. You reckon? Of course. You know, you're right. I mean, telling me I couldn't get a bad back from shifting that piano. What does he know? Of course you've had a bad back. Of course I've had a bad back from shifting that piano. Dear Mr. Pollock, stuff your job. You tell him to his face. I would. You know what? You, you're right, Terry. I mean, the time has come for direct action. Go for it, Curly. Right. Right. Mr. Pollock, you've got it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and get off a bit sharpish today. I'm going to go into town, see if I can pick up a bit of something for little Peter's birthday. It's in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, yeah, well, if you can't spoil your own grandson, who can you spoil? Afternoon, Hilda. Did you miss your bus? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. And there's no need to be sarky. I was at Mr Baldwin's this morning. Hilda, your private life is none of my business. <laughs> hey, look. Oh, what's that? It's a rose. For me, you little charmer. Well, you shouldn't have. Who said that? I don't know, it just says from an admirer. From an admirer? Yeah, look to Gloria, from an admirer. It was there on the step just now. What, our step here? Yeah. Well, that's funny. It wasn't there ten minutes ago when I come in. Well, who the heck can it be? Well, there must be somebody that thinks a lot of you. I mean, they don't come cheap, don't roses. Not this time of the year, love it. No, well, can't be one of our punters then, can it? Do you mind, Hilda? Some of the richest men in Weatherfield prop this bar up. Well, yeah, happen they do. Once. Don't come back, though, do they? Get back on your broomstick, Hilda. <laughs> Bye, heck, kid. The secret admirer. Hope your mother's soon better. Ta-ra. Oh. Can you manage all right, Mrs Pickles? Yes, thank you. Oh, good. Poor old soul. Her age and still a mother to look after. Hey, well, you timed that well. Oh. You look as if you bought warehouse. Oh, I never want to see another Easter card as long as I live. Actually, it's surprising how many people buy them, isn't it? I mean, I don't send many, but I don't get many either. Just nearest and dearest, I suppose. I mean, it's not like Christmas, is it, where you send to everybody? Oh, they're lovely, aren't they, Easter bunnies? Very seasonal, maybe. Uh, Jenna seems to be uh, settling down very well, doesn't she? Yes. Because it must yeah. be nice for her to be seeing so much of her father again. I think it is. Yeah, well, it's what they need, isn't it, children? I mean... Well, it's not like having a mother, but uh, it must be very nice for her to see you and Alan getting on so well. Mavis, are you leading up to something in your subtle way? No. No, I'm just pleased for Jenny that you and Alan are, are getting on so well together. Out with it, Riley. Well... What are you saying? No, I... Mavis, if you don't want this Easter bunny shoved down your throat, you better tell me what you're on about. Well, Jenny said... Jenny says that um, Alan and well, Mr. Bradley stayed with you last night. She said what? Well, I, I didn't believe it for a minute, Rita. Really. Maybe he did stay in my house on the settee last night because there was no sense in driving back in all that fog. You see, I knew it would be something like that. A little madam. Oh, she is a terror, isn't she? Did she behave herself in the restaurant last night? She didn't go to the restaurant, Mavis. She didn't go? No, she decided she had to practice with her band. Oh. And before you ask, yes, I did go with Alan. And yes, it was just the two of us. And it was a very pleasant evening. The two of you. Oh, that sounds lovely. Mavis. What? Watch it. What have you forgot, love? Terry? In here, Mr Baldwin. Oh, that's right, there was no rush. It's okay. I tried to get you this morning, but you'd already gone. Is there something wrong with the deliveries? No, no, spot on, no, they're very useful to us. It's been very useful to us and all. Good, well, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, now, don't get me wrong, you did a very good job. You were honest, reliable, and, uh, well, if I ever get stuck, I hope I'll be able to use you again. What are you saying? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I uh, interviewed a bloke this morning for a job. 
a driver. I put him on the payroll. You see, that's the way I like to operate. That way I'm the boss. So you mean you're not going to be using us no more? Well, like I said, I mean, if we ever get stuck again... Here, look, uh, here's a drink for you and your mate, and uh, thanks. I appreciate everything you've done. Yeah, right. Right, cheers. And thanks again, Terry. Yeah. Cheers, Mr Baldwin. Weatherfield, please. Refuse Inspector's Office. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, try on the District Council. But I thought company director sat around all day so we can cocktails. No, no. It's yeah. not like that, Trish. I mean, I've got to get my hands dirty just the same as Terry. But there's office work, paperwork, phones to answer. Well, doesn't your secretary do all that? Ah, uh, well, the company has developed so rapidly, uh, we've not had a chance to take on extra staff. So what with the office to run, decisions to make, deliveries, accounts, promotional work, I haven't got time to keep me bin round on. Oh yeah, I can see you can't have. Morning, Polly. Have you heard from Bradshaw, Trish? Well, morning, Mr. Pollock. Not yet, Mr. Pollock. Well, try and get him, would you, love? He should be at the tip. Uh, Mr. Pollock? Don't let him go for his dinner without I've had a word. Right, Mr. Pollock. Uh, Mr. Pollock? I thought I told you not to set foot in here again. Well, I only want a word. Well, make it quick, then. Well, in view of my other commitments... Go on. ...which, when all said and done, are far more important than emptying bins... I said quick. ...and the fact I don't appreciate being spied on by members of your family, Mr Pollitt, I've decided to terminate my employment here. Right, well, work till the weekend and I'll get your cards for you. Is that it? Is that all you've got to say? Well, what more do you want? A flipping knighthood? Oh, I see. Well, in that case... You can stuff your rotten job. Right, man. No luck. He's not there, Mr. Pollitt. Well, keep trying. There's a good job. Yes, Mr. Pollitt. You see, that's the trouble with modern management. They've lost all semblance of humanity. Out. <coughs> yes? Who? Watts? No, there's nobody here called Watts. I, I, I'm a mate of his, you see. So, could you tell me if... Definitely nobody called Watts. Hello? Hello? How many times do I have to tell you? He just doesn't want us to get married. Maybe he doesn't. There's no maybe about it. Well, he's not going to come round to it if he knows that I can't work for him because you say I can't. Well, in that case, don't tell him that. But why should I lie about it? Because I'm not saying you can't. I'm just trying to tell you what's happening out there. He's manipulating you. All right, he's manipulating me. But if I move back to that house, then he'll have to talk about the wedding. And that'll be the best for both of us, won't it? Anyway, he's offered me a job. He wouldn't do that unless he wanted the best for me. <laughs> come on. He's only offered you a job to get back at me. Do you honestly believe that? Well, if you want a job, come and work for me. I'll give you a job. He's offered me a job because he needs somebody, and I happen to be very good at it. You think so? I know so. God, I'm sick of this. Will you keep your voice down? I'm just trying to point out, it only seemed like yesterday that he was ordering you out of his house and thumping me in my own office. People don't change that quickly. Yeah, no, but he's trying to change. Well, if you think he's offering you a job and a home out of the goodness of his heart, then you must be flipping naive. Either that or stupid. Stupid? Susan, look, I'm sorry. Oh, tell him, Mike. Susan, I'm... Tell him. I don't want to hear about him. Or you, for that matter. Just go and tell him all about it. I'm sure it'll be a very interesting discussion if either of you had the guts. Susan, I'm sorry. Go I... and tell him. Oh, yeah, look, uh, put them down there. Oh, sorry. Oh, You'll be giving yourself an ulcer, Ken, the rate you ate that. Well, when you're as overworked as I am, Emily, it's an occupational hazard. Well, it shouldn't be. An extra ten minutes over lunch isn't going to put you out of a job. <coughs> I wouldn't be too sure. This staff business, it's a problem with you, isn't it? One of the many, Emily, one of the many. 
Have you had any response from Susan yet? No, no, not a word. I'd have thought she'd have jumped at it. Her old job back, working with you again. Well, left to herself, I think she might have. How do you mean? Well, what I mean is she isn't left to herself. She spends her waking hours being manipulated, but... Oh, well, better not go into that. I'm sure she'll come round to it. I wish I was. It seems to have got her into some sort of a trance. Anyway, I must be off. Thanks for the drink, Emily. I'll see you later. Bye. Yes, bye, Ken. Don't shoot. Thought you'd be at work. Work can wait. What's all this about? It's an apology. I'm sorry. I really am sorry, I mean. Well, I've never behaved like this with anyone. It makes it impossible for me, Mike. Yeah, I know. I... Well, I don't know what come over me. Oh, yes, I do. I'm... Well, I'm just nuts about you. I thought of your father trying to keep us apart. Well, I don't know, it just... It just scares me. He's not. I believe you. You must. You must believe me. Yeah. And anyway, it's not all that important, is it? <laughs> it's you that's important. And if you want to go back to work with him, well, that's fine. I mean, everything's fine. As long as you're happy. As long as we can get married. You're too important to me. And don't forget to do them flats today. Just because there's a load of stairs doesn't say to conveniently forget them. They stink them stairs. Then hold your nose. Oh, and there's something else as well. Have you uh, seen Curly? No, I haven't. Terry, is it urgent? Yeah, life and death. Look, if he looks in, send him down the yard, will you? All right, yes, I will. Bye. Yeah. And don't take all day. Oh, Jenny, just before you go, Mavis tells me you've been insinuating something about me and your father. Eh? Hey? Oh, don't come the injured innocent with me. You know exactly what I'm on about. I don't. Well, I'm not going to draw it for you. What I will say is that there are a number of reasons why it isn't very sensible. Now, I happen to get on very well with your father, but if you go around spreading on truths about us, I can see the day dawning when I don't. Understand? I haven't said anything. Must be your mucky mind, Mary. Oh, now you just listen to me, young lady. Oh, I don't want to interrupt anything. Well, it's all right, Alf. Come in. Oh, it's just the gazette. Anyway, it's up to you, isn't it? I mean, what goes on between consenting adults in private is none of my business. Oh, oh the little... What's all that about? I'll tell you what all that's No, about. you won't. There you are, Alf. Thank you. So that's the famous rose. Oh, yeah. I do think it's romantic. And you still don't know who it's from? Not a clue. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't in my stand line buying flowers. I suppose it wasn't what you'd call the romantic type, really. But, Betty, I'm not struck and it won't fit. Leave it. Oh, dear. <laughs> You don't think it's Frank, do you, Beth? Frank Mills. He just feels like one of his tricks. Well, I'd thought of that, kid, and for your sake, I hope it's not. And for mine, if I'm honest. Is he still round here, do you know? Kid, for all I know, he's joined the Legion. Mm. Fingers crossed for that. You and me. That's lovely, Beth. Yeah. It's grand of a little, little grandchild to buy for. I think it'll fit him. It says up to 18 months, look. Oh, yes, and they do stretch. Mm. To think. It's nearly a year already. Mm. Oh, do you know, our Trevor was just a year old when he fell down a coal chute in Kitchener Street. Oh. Come out as black as ink, but not a scratch on him. Oh. My heart stopped, though, I don't mind telling you. I should <laughs> just think it did. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, ladies. Has Curly been about Mrs. Bishop? Well, I haven't seen him since this morning, Terry. Wait a minute. What does he do all day? Business worries, I expect. Mm. Well, what do you really think of him? I think he's a very nice man, Jenny, and I know he thinks a lot about you. How's the homework? But, see, you met my party or something, and had nothing to do with me or anything like that. Or would you fancy him? 
Is that a geography boot? A Mills and Boom? Would you, though? Jenny, just get on with that homework. I'll get it. Hey, it might be him. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Right, go out there. Oh, where's your car? I left it in the car. Is uh, Rita around? Yeah, she's in there. Oh. He's brought you flowers. Hello, Alan. Hello, Alan. Hello, Rita. Hello, Rita. These are for you. Thank you. And before you say anything, these are for you. Charles. Oh, they're beautiful. You shouldn't have bothered. Well, it was just to say thank you for putting me up last night. Well, couldn't have driven back in all that weather last night, could you? Oh, and incidentally, I've arranged to meet Mavis in the Rovers tonight, so you two have got the place to yourselves. Oh, great. I thought Mavis said she was going to the pictures with Mrs Bishop. I think that's another night, Jenny. It's very kind of you, Rita, but I'm beginning to feel a bit out of order, you know, being here so much. Well, don't. Just feel free to come and go as you please. Well, as long as you be sure and tell me if I start getting under your feet. I'm sure you won't. In fact, I think she quite likes it. Do you well, want one? Right. Well, this is it then. Yeah. I'm gonna miss you. Yeah, I'll miss you too. Mind you, it's not as if I'm a million miles away, is it? Oh, I don't know. I sometimes think your old man lives on a different planet. But let's make sure it's not for long, eh? Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to come in? <laughs> You've got to be joking. The atmosphere would be like sitting in a deep freeze. <laughs> no. We'll say goodbye now. Oh, Mike. Hmm? Oh. He picks his moments, doesn't he? Cool. Hello. Hi. Hello, Betty. Uh, have a pint, please. OK, love. My word, you look smart, Norman. Hi, it's my executive suit, see? Do you like it? It's a sight for sore eyes, is that, lad? What's it in here, Norman? Well, there comes a time in every man's life when he's got to take on a few responsibilities. Yours being the repayment on the suit. Oh, no, no, cash. It's a sort of celebration, you know, for, for telling my boss in no uncertain terms what he can do with his job. What, well, you've been, boss? Yeah. It's not a very good idea. No, no, no. I mean, you want to keep friendly. You never know when you might want your job back. Never. Hey, Terry was looking for you this afternoon. Oh, right. He was in the shop looking for you and all. Oh. Hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Surrounded by fellas, just like Jenny said you would be. <laughs> hey, what are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be looking after that daughter of yours. Well, a little mate of hers called Lisa arrived, so it became a straight choice. Between me and a game of Scrabble and Lisa and the new Paul Young record. No contest. No contest. Well, let me help you to drown your sorrows. What will you have? Oh, thank you. I'll have a pint, please. Okay. I thought you were supposed to be looking after Mavis. Ah, well, we got our wires crossed as well. All right. Well, at first, I was all for being polite, but you know, some people, Kenneth, is, don't choose their words. So I, I won't tolerate rudeness, Kenneth. So I said to Excuse myself, me, is... Kenneth. Uh, could I have a word? Yeah, yeah, sure. Between the two of us, if you don't mind. Excuse me, Norman. Yeah. I thought you'd like to know, Kenneth, I've just seen your lass going into your house, you know, your suit. Seriously? Yes, and I bet you can guess whose car she came in. Oh, it's none of my business, of course. So she's there now? That's right. Excellent. Thank you, Percy. Uh, do you want that? Has it paid for? It is. Well, oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, Hi, Ken. Uh, have you seen Kelly? Uh, yeah, try the snack. Cheers. So I told him, I said, the trouble with management nowadays is they've lost that human touch. And then before he could get away, where have you been? I've been looking for you everywhere, mate. Jenny, what you having? Hang on a minute. Hey, what do you reckon? Business for the procuring, Curly. Now. You two can be a young executive. I'll give you the name of my team. Shut up and listen a minute, Curly. Did you chuck your job in? Gloria. Well, Terry, I went down there, but when it came to it, well, I, I chickened out. Ha, ha, ha! Got you there. Would I let you down? Mr. Poet, I said you can stuff your job. I give it to him straight. You did? No messing. Right between the eyes. It's me and you, kid. Great. Put it there, partner. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for anything. Good. Baldwin don't want us no more, mate. What? Got himself a new driver. You're kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Gloria, give us a pint, will you, please? Yeah, sure. I'm getting one. This is on Baldwin. Better make the most of it, eh? So what do you reckon? I reckon we're in stuck. Yeah. That's what I reckon, I know. You and me both, mate. I reckon we're in dead stuck. Have you gone in for early retirement or something? Eh? Hey? Well, you do know what time it is. Ah, oh, flipping it. Why didn't you say something? I just did. 
Oh, and you better pick up some fish and chips for yourself tonight. Why, uh, you going out? Yeah, I thought I'd pop round to Weatherfield General for an hour and see how Ada Arrowsmith's getting on. Who's Ada Arrowsmith when she's out? Oh, we used to meet her at Bingo, her and her Arthur. He passed on not long after Stanford, so. Only I've not seen her in months, but I heard somebody in the butcher saying she'd had this operation. Gallbladder, you know. So I thought I'd just pop along and see how she's going on. Fish and chips it is, then. Yeah, well, uh, I shouldn't be late back. A visiting finishes at eight. Ah, uh, this time tomorrow, then. Eh? Well, I'll next see you. Happen I'll be out when you come home. Oh, that saddened girl, I suppose. Her name's Sally. She's still a sad All right, Mrs. Hull, let's not start that again. You made it quite clear to what you think of her family. But you've got to take people as you find. And Sally's all right, I'm telling you. Right, I'll have to fly. See you. Yeah, see you, Kevin. Hey. Hey, up. Stand by your bed. Morning, ladies. Mm. Morning. So I purchased two dozen ballpoint pens in this establishment yesterday, and I've had a 25% failure rate with them. You mean you actually tested them all? I did, and those are six dozen. Well, we're gladly replaced them. Look at that. Made in Japan. Now, I'm not one to all the goods, but I believe in buying now tells only British. Even all my underwear is British made. Oh, let's have a quick deco. Mavis has never seen Long John. You just have to take my word for it, so can I change those for six British pens, please? Here we are. Made in Hong Kong. Now, that's still British, isn't it? Just. No, oh, there you are, look. Made in England. Now, do you want to test those? No, no, not of the British made. Now, take a tip from one who knows. That's you, I suppose. Start by now, Tony British, and we'll soon have them dull cues cut in halves. Mavis, get rid of them French knickers. Not now. It's no joke, it matters all. Think on. We led the world once, we can do it again. Ta-da. Ta-da. That's it, love. Now, can I have a packet of the extra strong mints, please? So have you actually finished them? Eh? On the bins? Oh, yeah, yeah, sir. Well, it was all a bit sudden, wasn't it? Well, you know, once you've made your mind up... And you didn't have to serve your notice. Well, no, we both agreed that I should leave straight away. You know, no mutual consent. In other words, you told the boss what he could do with his job. <laughs> well, it did become a bit heated, yeah. Well, I only hope you don't live to regret it. Well, why should I do that? Well, it wasn't such a bad job, was it? Still, if you think you can make a go of the yard, good luck to you, love. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. So, Perkle. you are busy, then? Why do you think I had to give up the bins? <laughs> Oh, Curry. Oh, morning, Mr. Baldwin. I don't want you to get the wrong idea about me, you know. Wrong idea? Well, I'm not exactly flavour of the month with you at the moment, am I? Well, you know, I mean, uh, you gave up your job to work full-time at Terry, then I sort of pulled the rug from under your feet by taking that delivery job off your hands. Well, it was a bit of a blow, I admit. Well, it wasn't meant to be a long-term thing. I thought I'd explain that to Terry. Well, it's all water under the bridge now, isn't it? I mean, we haven't got much of a business if we let losing one order put our noses out of joint, have we? Glad to hear you see it like that. What other ways are there to see it? You say something? Flippy teapot's hot. Well, of course it is. I've just brewed, haven't I? You couldn't give us a show, could you? I was going to. I was just letting it stew. Hey, uh, have you been out of Baldwin's flat recently? Not since the end of last week, no. He told me not to bother for a few days. Why? Hey, I've just wondered. What about? I just saw Susan Barlow begging some washing out. At Barlow's? Well, I don't mean at the town hall flagpole, do I? Hey! He's just clocked Susan Barlow pegging the washing out. Well, whatever turns him on, I suppose. Ah, the Barlow's. It is a raw mill, dear. Ah, but it isn't, is it? She's been stopping at Mike Baldwin's. <laughs> of course, you know what's happened, don't you? He's got fed up with her and turfed her out on her ear, like he does with all his women when he's done with them. And that's your considered opinion, is it, Tilda? Well, if I was you, I'd keep my trap shut and tell you what had really happened. Well, either she's back home or she isn't. She is. She is? That's right, Deirdre told me. What else did she tell you? Not. Not at all. And I didn't press the matter either. For one thing, if she'd have wanted to tell me, she would have done. And for another, I didn't really with none of my business. That for Gloria? Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm just going to take that through. Save your trip then, haven't I? Yeah, love. Yeah, cock. Cock all of this. Ooh, Tarbe. Oh, Good morning, Betty. Morning, love. I think it is still morning. Just. There's no need to be sarky. You blame the bus driver, not me. Looks like it's your lucky day again, though. Mm, that's what I thought it was. Where was it this time? On the doorstep, same as usual. Hang on a sec. Don't you think you'd better have a look at the card? I know what it'll say. Well, it might just set a bet. To Gloria, thinking of you every minute of every day. Did you see anybody when you come in? Not a soul, lover. I must have only just missed him. I mean, it can't be more than five minutes since I was out there myself. Shouldn't worry about it. He'll expose himself sooner or later. I think you better reword that, Betty. You know what I mean. Look, the fella's not been born yet that chucks his money away for nout. Well, that's what's bothering me, isn't it? Just what does he want? I would have thought that was obvious, Chuck. You! And make sure you wipe your hands before you handle them two bags and all. 
If we brew your mood yesterday, it tasted like the inside of a gearbox. Well, no would I? Not been in the, in the habit of looking out gearboxes lately. Like. Hey, God, we have watch it for you. You still want to work here, that is. Oh, it's funny you should mention that. Eh? I've been thinking, haven't I? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Go on, then. What about? How about working here? I mean, when I went, what my mate Curly's got going for him. Yeah, good luck to him and all. He won't need it. According to Terry, them two are already on the way to making the first million. By the time they've made a million, money will have gone out of fashion. <sighs> hey, I'll get it. You carry on making the tea, if you can. <laughs> and don't forget what I said. Um, hello. So's the garage? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Oh, uh, Kevin. Sexy sound. Hi. Is this all good or not? We sat by the phone all morning just in case you happen to phone up. What can I do for you? Dinner? Yeah. Well, well, it wasn't lunch too late, but it can be arranged. Yeah, okay. I'll be there about one. Bye now. Just can't keep your hands off me. You believe it, mate. Just soon have you jumping through hoops. Yeah, uh, I was thinking of going to the rovers anyway. Ah, oh, Webster! Look at the size of that unker. You big liar. <laughs> much? Seven pounds sixty, but it is two weeks. Oh, flipping heck. This marriage lark, it's certainly an eye-opener, isn't it? <laughs> well, you must have had newspapers before you were married. Of course I did, Mavis, but I didn't have to pay for them, did I? Let Brian and Gail have that pleasure. I better get home, it's the only place I don't spend out. <laughs> Ta-da! See you, Audrey. Oh, sorry, love, you're all right. Oh, don't be. Hey, you're a married woman, remember? Am I ever going to be allowed to forget it? No. <laughs> See you then. ta Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I think I'll just go and pop the kettle on while we're quiet. Don't have to make yourself scarce on my account. I'm not making myself scarce on anybody's account. I just happen to fancy a cup of tea. So what brings you here at this time of day? Don't say Mavis's tea won't believe you. No, I'm not stopping that long. Very wise. No, I just dropped in to let you know that I'm moving. Moving? Well, to be more accurate, I've already moved. Oh. As from today, I'm staying there. And Castro Hotel Station Road, yeah. Weatherfield. Oh, how come? Well, it looks like this job is taking longer than we thought, and uh, there's a couple of other contracts in the air, so we thought it would make more sense if I move somewhere over here instead of trekking from Leeds every day. So, uh, if you could let Jenny know. Yes, of course I will. Thanks. I'll be in touch later. Right, well, I'd better be going. Should have been in uh, Eccles half an hour ago. Oh, that's right. Don't keep Eccles waiting. Good now. Bye. Yes, he just popped in to give me his new address. New address? That's right. Looks as if he'd be going to be over here for quite some time. Oh, so I'll be seeing quite a bit more of him then. Well, I certainly hope so, yes. For Jenny's sake. What else? What is she on about now? She's not on about anything I am. And I'm saying it won't do any harm for you to take her out now and again. I mean, come on, Jack. After all, she's your missus. Well, she's never around for me to take out, is she? I mean, she spends three nights a week at the bingo with you, and then there's the pictures. Well, she doesn't want to go out with me, Jack. Not all the time, does she? I mean, she wants you to take her out once in a while. Well, I do. Oh, right. Okay. Tell me when what last time. Eh? You heard? When was the last time that you and Beer had a proper night out? I promise he's ready. That was nearly three months since. Is it my fault? She keeps turning me down. She keeps turning you down? Oh, she could have got to the snooker final, the Legion Dart semi-final. Okay, I give in. You fellas, you're all flipping same, aren't you? Still no sign, then? No. Well, she certainly knows how to keep a fellow waiting, this new girlfriend of yours. Do you want to fill it up while I'm here? No, I'll uh, give it another couple of minutes and I'll have to be getting back. And there's probably some perfectly good explanation. The usual is. Yeah. Well? Well, what? Made his move yet, has he, Mr. Wonderful? Oh, you're joking. Have you not spotted any likely, lads? Nobody looking at you a bit funny like. No more than usual. Have you noticed anything? Well, now you come to mention it, that gummy fellow was asking about you earlier on. You know, the one with no teeth spends most of his dinner hours sucking crisps. Oh, thanks very much, but I'm trying to be serious. So am I. What's so aggravating is he could walk through that door any minute and I wouldn't know him from Adam. Of course you would. Tall, bronzed, built like a brick washhouse. How does that sound? Perfect. Right. Next fellow that comes through that door. You mark my words. Oh, yes, it's a bit parky out there. You wouldn't think spring was just round corner, would you? <laughs> fellow that invented long johns, he should be knighted. <laughs> now what have I said? Hey, off then, love. Yeah, may as well. Look, look like she's going to show now. Oh, never mind. Hey, up. Just a lot of work to see. Sorry, mate. I'm just going. 
Well, come on, you got time for a quickie? Oh, I haven't, honest. I'm like, it is. Listen, I'll square it with Bri. I'll uh, tell my ass you to have a look at the van or something. Forget it, Terry. I'm going. Look, if she does turn up, Chuck, I'll tell you how to get back. Okay, thanks, Mrs. Stewart. Okay, Doc. Aye, aye. Thank you, okay, Terry, knock it off. You've been stood up, haven't you? Okay, so she's not shown up. Someone probably come up. Well, she could have phoned. How long have you been stood here? Well, dinner. No. Yeah, someone's turned up all right, mate. No, I'm yeah? not sure. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, listen, mate, in my book, there's only two reasons why a bird stands you up. Either she's having you for a mug or she's trying to tell you something. Quite a bit of please, Betty. Oh, hello. What do I find you here? Following me or something. Every time I turn around today, you seem to be there. Listen, Chuck, if she's complaining, you can follow me instead. Right, well, I'll have uh, half a bit of peas and whatever Rita's drinking. Oh, thanks very much. I'll get it for you, love. Thank you. So, what does bring you here? Well, I didn't realise I needed an excuse. Not now I'm living round here. Living round here? Yeah? Yes, Alan's moved into one of those commercial hotels on Station Road. Has he now? Yeah, I'll it'll know. make it handier, you know. Oh, it Thank will, you. for both of you. He'll be able to see quite a lot more of his daughter, if that's what you mean. What else? Hi, Mike. Mm. Oh, well, I'll give you a shot. Mr. Baldwin, just the person I wanted to see. Well, it looks like your lucky day, Hilda. What can I do for you? Well, I was just wondering if it'd be all right to come round and see to your flat again. Only you did tell me not to bother for a few days. Oh, yeah, glad you reminded me. Uh, tomorrow morning will be great. Well, uh, if it's all the same to you, I was thinking of popping round this afternoon for an hour. No need for that, Hilda. No trouble, honest. All right, well, if that's the way you feel, be my guest. That time, Mr. Baldwin. I'll get along then. See ya. Mm. <laughs> that woman's about as subtle as a steam. Mama. Yeah, but she's going to be unlucky, isn't she? Nothing to hide, then. Clean as a whistle. So, what went wrong this time? Wrong? You and Susan Barlow. Deirdre says she's back at home. Ah, uh, and you assumed I chucked her out, did you? Well, you've got to admit, it wouldn't be the first time. Well, why is it people around here always so keen to believe the worst in me? Some of us have got good reasons. Yeah, point taken, but no, it's not like that this time. Uh, I really care for Susan. So that's why she's left your little nest and gone back home, is it? Yes, it is. It was the only way we could get Ken to agree to give her away. Cheers. Cheers. Hey. Hey. Do we have to have that thing blasting the roof off? Happy now. Till his garage. Oh, hello, Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alf, mate. I can't resist it. Yeah, yeah, we're ready by about half four. Okay, see you then. ta -ra. Hi. Hello, love. Is Daddy? Yeah, he's in there, and you're welcome to him. Hey, laughing boy. Now what? Uh, you've got a visitor. Hi. Hello. I just come around to say I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry I missed you at dinner night. Like. Waited nearly an hour for you. Yeah, I know. Something come up, didn't it? Like what? Well, I just got held up. I'm sorry, Kev. It couldn't be helped. You could have phoned up, couldn't you? I couldn't find a phone. Not one that were working. Not till it were too late. Ah. That's what's been bugging you then. Hey? Well, uh, he's been as prickly as a hedgehog since then. He thought you stood him up. This is supposed to be a private conversation, Brian. Well, sorry I spoke, I'm sure. Stood you up? Well, yeah, it did cross my mind. I mean, what am I supposed to think when you never show? I'll tell you one thing for now, Kevin Webster. I'm not in the habit of standing anybody up. And if I don't want to see a lad, I'll tell him straight right. Oh, well, all right, you can make it. You said you saw her. Let's just forget about it. What about tonight? What about it? Well, we talked about going over skiing. Well, we said one night. Yeah, well, what's wrong with tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, Kev. We're going to have to give it a miss tonight. I don't feel like it. OK. We'll think of something else. No, not tonight, Kevin. What's wrong? Is it something I've said? Something I've done? No, it isn't. Look, I'll give you a ring in the morning, eh? I promise. If you say so. Well, I'd better let you get on. Ta-ra, Bri. Yes, you love. See you, Kev. Never said a word, mate. He reckons it pays to advertise, eh? I've had my car in your window best part of three weeks. Well, perhaps you're asking too much for it. I'll take that, I think. All right, right. that's 38 pence. Right. Hey, you don't fancy a window round, do you? Oh. Keep you happy while you're out at them council meetings. You see some rare sights, you know, especially first thing in the morning. That would be... I see all the sights I want to see first thing in the morning, thank you very much, in my own mirror. <laughs> <laughs> see you. Bye-bye.
Well, you're going to keep it in another week, or aren't you? Well, I'll tell you what. You leave it in for another week for now till you've got a deal. Well, it's only 10p anyway. Well, they are. It's going to cost you next to nothing. And just think all the, the trust and goodwill it builds up between fellow traders, eh? Here you are, a little star, maybe. Tell on. <laughs> Well, I was beginning to think you decided to take your holidays. Two o'clock, you said. Oh, hello, Mr. Bradford. Well, we happened to bump into each other in the road. Oh, I see. I, I didn't know she was with you. Well, when you've a lot of things to talk about, it's amazing how time flies. Isn't that right? It certainly does. And I better not keep you any longer. Uh, I don't suppose you're free tonight, eh? It's just that it's my first night in town, as a resident, that is. Me free? Yeah. Don't you mean your daughter? Well, both of you. I thought we might go out somewhere. Well, if you fancy a good picture, I went to see Chorus Line oh. last night with them and I can recommend it. Great. Chinese takeaway afterwards, what do you say? Well, I'll have a word with Jenny. You do that and I'll see you later on. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. You must have had a lot to talk about. Yes, we did. About Jenny, I take it. Well, that's why he's here. Anybody else? Not that I know of. Oh, let's face it, Betty, it could be anybody. Hey! What you doing with my menu board? It's on an errand of mercy, Betty. Errand of mercy? Yeah. Whoever's sending them roses to Gloria must know her, right? Well, I suppose so, yeah. So, we're making a list of all the likely candidates and knocking them off one by one. Savvy? Now, where are we up to? Barney. Barney? Barney! He has the flat downstairs from me. He's an electrician. Done a couple of odd jobs for mm. me. I don't think it's him. At least I hope it isn't. Who else? <laughs> well, I've got Roger down, but he was a long time ago. Roger? Yeah, I knew him before I came here. Huh? Worked for an airline. Right smooth mm. he no, was. No, I mean from round here. Well, I've got the lads down. Kevin, Curly, Terry. Lord, the only one that I can see bombarding a girl with roses is Mike Baldwin. Oh, I never thought of him. Well, you can forget him. Huh? Any roses he's got going spur won't be landing up on our front doorstep. <laughs> now, what about them three stooges? Oh, no. Now, young Kevin's got a lot on his plate with this new girlfriend of his. Yeah, and I can't see it being curly. Can I smell tea? What are you doing back here? Oh, I left my cat behind the bar, didn't I? <coughs> hey, I bet you could squeeze another one out of that pot there, Betty. Eh? I'll go and get you another cup. <laughs> What's all this about, then? We're making a list of all the fellas we think could have sent those roses. Well, wouldn't it be quicker to make a list of all the fellas that wouldn't send you roses? I'm trying to be serious, Jack. So am I, darling. Where are we up to? Uh, Terry. Terry? Oh, a Terry. Why not? I don't make me laugh. Whoever's doing this has got charm and style and more than a touch of romance in his soul. Well, that's how a Terry out and all counts, isn't that's it? That's you out and all, doesn't it? Mind you, not that you were in, running in first place. Well, do you mind? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Chuck. Oh, no. Looks like all that leaves you is Les Agnew. Les Agnew? Les who? The Sanya, you twerp. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks very much, Bet. Great idea. That turned out to be just. Is that you, Kevin? Ah, the way, then. Yes, I'm just off. Mm. You got your fish and chips, all right, then? Oh, I'm just about. You're for my long. Well, I should be back about half eight. Um, I expect you'll be gone by then. No, oh, it. Thought you said you was out tonight. Yeah, I might go down the road for the last hour. That's about it. Ah, she's not let you down again, has she? Eh? Well, uh, I heard about dinner time. Betty Turpin said you seemed proper upset. Yeah, well, Betty Turpin wants to keep her nose out, don't you? Look, if you're going for that 25 plus yeah, bus... Yeah, just off. Hey, why don't you give Michelle a ring? Ta-da, Mrs. O. Ta-da. Well, it didn't take you long to slip the leash, did it? After the council meeting, didn't it? And would you believe I'm on my way round to see our game? Of course I would, Audrey. No, honest, I'm just having this one and then I'm off. I'm beginning to rule the day we have a bar at number 11. You what? By the time you two are finished with it, it'll be like a little palace. Uh, not the house, the moving, all them flipping packing cases. It's playing hallelujah with me nails. Listen, mate, if I hear Mike Baldwin's name or that delivery contract once more... All I'm saying is it would have made a difference. You wouldn't have chucked your job in, you mean? Well, I would have hung on a bit longer, yeah. I see. So you're quite happy to come in full-time when you think that there's uh, something on the table. But when you actually have to start It's drafting... not like that at all. Just that I'd be a sight happier if we had more going for us. And we will have, just as soon as you forget about what might have been and start thinking more about the future. You've got to think positive, mate. It's just that I'm used to a steady job. You know, a regular wage packet, you know. And where would you have been in two years' time, eh? Still empty and flaming bins. At least now we've got prospects. We're working for ourselves, not lining the pockets of other people. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. No more looking back. From tomorrow morning, it's the dawn of a new era. What have we got on? First thing? Yeah. Shifting some rubbish from that garage in Union Street to the tip. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Half a bit, please, love. For you, Percy? Anything. If I'd have been 20 years <laughs> young, you might have lived to regret that remark. You sly old dog. If you'd have been 20 years younger, Percy, I'd never have said it. <laughs> right, I'm off. So soon. If I don't get going, our girl will be sending out a search party. I'll see you, Beth. Bye-bye. Well, I'm sorry, Anne. I really am. I know how much you were looking forward to it, but when you could see how she was, once your Jenny makes up her mind she doesn't want to do something, dynamite, won't she? Well, you can't blame her, I suppose. I think I'd sooner have been out with my mates and all when I was her age. Yeah, I know, but one night's not going to make much difference, is it? There'll be others. So, what are you going to do with yourself now, then? Tonight? Mm. Well, I still fancy seeing that film, so uh, if you've got nothing better to do... Uh... <laughs> you really are trying to get them tongues wagging, aren't you? There's nothing wrong with showing a bit of gratitude. Well, when you put it like that... Mrs. Hope? Kevin. What's wrong? He's not your friend, is it? The one in the hospital? Not gone worse, has she? No, no, it's not her. She's fine, thanks very much. No, it's, uh, it's what I saw on my way home. What? Well, look, I know what you're going to think of me, because I've always made it what? quite clear what I think about that girl, but this is the gospel truth, Kevin, What it? is? I know why Sally said and couldn't see you tonight. I've seen her going in the flying horse with another lad. Nah, she wouldn't... I'm not making it up, Kevin. What happened? You were mistaken. No, no, it was her, all right. I'd know that little madam anyway. Well, I don't believe it. I'm not in the habit of telling lies, Kevin. Look, I I'm sorry, but I did warn you. I could see something like this happening right from the start. Well, I told you what her family were like, and she's no different. They're all tied with the same brush, believe you me. Where are you off to? Oh, I'm not stopping here to listen to you slag off Sally and her family. But she's no good, Kevin. You want to thank your lucky stars you found out now before she really made yeah. a fool of Well, I reckon that's for me to decide, not you or anybody else. I'm getting just a bit sick and tired of folk down here trying to run my life for me. Particularly you, Mrs. Ogden. You're not my mum, you know. Well, well, what time will you be back? I don't know. Might be better for both of us if I never come back. Good night at the flicks, were it? Oh, I see the jungle drums have been at it again, have they? And it weren't Maeve you were with neither, were it, eh? No, Beth. It wasn't Mavis I was with. <sighs> oh, I see lover boys struck again. Bye, heck, he must have it back. Kevin? Looks like I'm on my own again, Chuck. Oh, it's you. You better come in. Thomas is all, but it's uh, Roger the Lodger I'm after. Him that can fix anything on the cheap. He's not still in his pit, is he, the lazy son? So you want me to go and turf him out? No, he's not up there, Terry. Me and Kevin had words last night, heated words, and he stormed out the house. Well, you mean he's done a bunk, scarpered? Oh, I mean, he wants his head feeling, does Kevin. Where's he gone? Oh, I only wish I knew, Terry. Moody was in, he could be anywhere. Do you know, I didn't think I'd ever hear Kevin saying hurtful things like that. I've always tried to be like a mother to him, and I was only telling him for his own good. Here, yeah, don't you go upsetting yourself, Mrs. O. Hang on, I'll, I'll make us a brew, all right? It's that Sally he's been knocking about with. Oh, uh, I might have guessed. Right scrubber, if you ask me. Miss, well, I was just coming back from visiting an old friend, Ada Arrowsmith. She's in Weatherfield yeah. General with her bladder. And I seen this Sally going in the flying horse with another lad. Bold as brass, had his arm round her and all. 
He doesn't half pick him, does Kev? Oh, come on, Brian, no excuses. I could have done the job myself, Bernard. I went it this afternoon without foul, right? I mean, I'm having to walk to work. I mean, me walk. It's a bad image for us executives, you know. No problem, Mike. No problem at all. Listen, I'll make sure I'll have it ready by about... Oh, flaming Nora. Not again. Oh, so Sleeping Beauty's been keeping in my posh motor all night, has he? And I've just spent a fortune having it valeted. Looks like it. Woman trouble, I suppose. Hang about, hang. Come on, wakey, wakey. Let's be having you, sunshine. Come on, Kevin. Out you get. Morning. Good morning, Kevin. Have a nice sleep, did we? One more trouble, I suppose. So off. The row with Mrs. Ogden. Oh, he's not only ruining my jag, he's upsetting my au pair to boot. I can't take any more of this, you know. I'll expect at least 10% knocked off for this little caper. Sorry, Bry. It's my rotten luck in coming in, then. Nothing goes right for me lately. Frigging back's killing. It will serve you right. And the kipper in back of cars has got to stop, Kevin. Got it? Oh, isn't it lovely? A yellow one this time. I wonder why? The yellow rose of Texas. I mean, it's a big, rich yank. Cattle ranch, oil wells. On a nostalgia trip to Burton Wood. You know, a real J.R. time. Jimmy Rotten stall, you mean? Him that works on the fish market. Flash car, fat wallet. Jealous wife, three kids. Mm, knowing my luck, it'll be some old bloke with an allotment. Probably be sending me beetroot and cabbage come springtime. If you look close enough, he's got black fly while spraying. Hilda, stop putting the mockers on it, will you? You can't beat a bit of mystery, bit of romance. <laughs> How would you now? Morning, girls. How's Jack's little hair on this morning? Morning. morning. Why, it was a decent cup of tea. That brew I've here I just made, I can feel it rotting my socks. Look, Jack, Casanova struck again. Oh, what a beauty. To Gloria, the girl of my dreams, we must get together sometime. Any idea, Jack? No idea. What about you, Hilda? You usually know all the juicy gossip, don't you? Well, it's flipping obvious who's been sending them, isn't it? Well, just ask yourselves three questions. One, who's been lusting after Gloria ever since she first swam through that bar? Two, who contrived to get himself a job working alongside her? And three, well, I forget three, but you get me drift, don't you? Oh, no, Hilda. We crossed Jacko off the list yesterday. He couldn't afford roses. Not on what I pay him, any road. <laughs> like as not, he'd nick him out the cemetery. Hey, now, do you mind? I've been accused of a few things in my time, but never grave robbing. Oh, roses aren't your style, are they, Jack? Oh, no, you'd be surprised, you know. I'm very sensitive under this rugged exterior. I take after my granddad. He used to like beautiful poetry, till the police caught him and made him scrub it all off. Oh, no, <laughs> Jacko. In all your wedded bliss, You've never given Vera a flower, have you? Now, that's rubbish. Only last Saturday I brought her this beautiful cauliflower suit or two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you lovely, Jack. Oh, keep my head. Hey, that rose is prickly. So where was Jenny when you were both off enjoying yourselves? Oh, now, where were it? She did tell me. I'm not sure whether it was the Orinoco or the Abdullah Club. Anyway, she's not back yet. She's worse than you for living it up. You mean Jenny's been out all night? Oh, Mavis, for heaven's sake. She went out with a schoolmate and she was back home at ten o'clock. So, yes, me and Alan went alone, and we both enjoyed the film. He had a tutti fruit in the interval, I had a drink on a stick. No, he didn't hold me hand, and despite women's lib, I let him do all the paying. Satisfied? But I'm not that interested, to be honest. Well, he could have fooled me. <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, oh, maybe, give us 20 fags, I'm gasping, love. Oh, well, actually, it's national no smoking today, Mr. Dutton. Come again. It's a little scheme to help you addicts kick the habit. Twenty well, tip, were it? I, I, I'm refusing to sell them because it makes me feel like a pusher. And I've heard you say many a time that you wanted to give up smoking. Give up fags? Easy, giving up breathing, a lot less painful and all. Well, I just don't understand the problem. I mean, if you want to stop, just stop. Don't buy any. It's quite simple, mm. really. Mavis, Mavis, have you never had an uncontrollable urge? Absolute desperation for something so that you stop it now to get to it. Steady on, Jack. No, never. Well, I have. Give us me fags. No, I won't. Twenty tip, there you are. <sighs> okay, Maeve, you win. Let's try and give it up for the day. It's not going to be easy, though. I must be balmy. Hey, Riley. I'm going to knock all this lost profit out your wages. Well, it'll be worth it if I just get one convert. You know, Mavis, you're the nearest thing I've ever met to a saint. Probably. I said, I've never noticed. Does Alan smoke? Yeah. 
For your sake, love. Oh. Hope it's none of this lot. Oh, I don't know, though. Hey, fat chance. You've done your draw for him. At least. Look, my money's still on Percy. He's more your rose man, you know, and I'm sure underneath that flat cap lurks a dirty old devil. Oh, well. <laughs> Give us half a lager, please, Betty, will you? OK, look. And go on, I'll chance one of your pies. Oh, slumming it, are we? No, uh, no five-star business lunch on expenses. Got to be joking. The jalopy's off the road, isn't it? Like having a leg amputated. A complete feeling of helplessness. Oh, give up. You could always get a bus that'd let you on the not fussy, you know. A bus? Me? I've got my image to think of. You know, it makes me sick, folks like you. You know, you, you won't go to the corner unless you're in a, the comfort of your own car. How would you got about a hundred years ago? In a handsome cab house. <laughs> oh, God, you must have some inkling. You're Mike's right-hand man, so to speak. Mr. Baldwin confides to me about business and nothing else. So if you don't ask me if him and Ken Barlow's lass is getting wed, ask him. Oh, well enough. Don't you dare, Audrey. Morning, Mike. How do you fancy dining with two attractive females today? No, thanks. I'll sit with you and I instead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fancy a drink? Uh, no, no. Two halves of lager, please. Two halves of lager, please, Gloria. Make it snappy. I've just got to get back on the treadmill. Well, your ears burning just then because me and I here was wondering. I was doing no such thing. Come on, Ivy, you're as curious as I am. Nosy, you mean? Oh. All right, nosy as I am. Hey, get pushed in on that Glasgow order, will you? I'd like to crack it north of the border. I wonder if there's a market for denim kilts. Oh, come <laughs> on, no talking shop while I'm here, please. Now, what me and Ivy was wondering as well, whether you and young Susan had made any definite plans yet. You know, engagement, wedding day. Audrey Belto. Has Ivy got to start a collection at work or what? Why not? All donations, gratefully received. Oh, you're not worried about the difference in your age, Audrey? Though? No, Audrey is right. I must admit, I uh, would have liked someone a little bit younger, but then that's fate, isn't it? <laughs> Your lips are sealed, then. Mm. But there is one little bit of info I can give you, but uh, I don't want it going any further, you know, to uh, betting that lot over there. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, honest, what's that word, Mr. Bowen? I'll believe it. I'll believe it not. And you are the first two to know that the best meat pie I've had today. <laughs> Should have seen your faces. Yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. The pig. Yeah, and his feet were always fussed in trough and all. Two halves of lager, that's 78 pence, please. Hey, Banjo, you keep it under there, or what? Oh, it's you. We thought you were giving our van the once-over. It's the engine again. There's a chance. Well, we're motors top priority. After what that crafty cockney did to us? Just let me under there for five minutes or so, right through his brake cables. <laughs> <laughs> you brought the van off all, one and all, didn't you? I warn you about him. There's only chance, Kevin. It's not pulling in top gear. Yeah. See what I can do. Uh, I'm not promising anything. Here, yeah. where well, are you sleeping tonight, you? Do you know you've got Mrs. O in a right state? You're a right wally at times, you. Have you left home, Kev? I won't mind moving in with Mrs. Ogden. I'll give you the key. Was it that seven bird larking about? I don't want to talk about it, OK? You're as bad as me, Kev, when it comes to choosing lady friends. You're yeah. a right pair, you two. You want to take a few tips from an expert? That's what I was talking. You've been ditched yourself a few times lately, haven't you? How's the nipper? Oh, haven't you seen it yet? Listen, I don't need to take that from you, Webster, See all right? yourself. Take your crappy old van somewhere else. Come on, push off. Come on, Terry. I think Kev must have got out the wrong side of bed this morning. Flippin' heck. I promised Bo when it was ready for dinner. I suppose you've been yapping with your two mates. The heck is like, it's finished. Take it round now. Good. And wipe your dirty boot marks off the armrest. Hey, Kev. Oh, my Chad, my favourite. Where are you taking me? Southport. Fred Statton. Oh, I thought you'd be to dinner. Surprised you've got the cheek to show your face around there. Well, what's that supposed to mean? What's up with you? Oh, don't come the old innocent with me. You spotted last night. You've not forgot last night, have you? Well, that's when you finished. Got it? Finished. Last night? Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, I thought you might. Suppose it was Alex, the one whose photos you carry around in your handbag. Yeah, but it wasn't what oh, you Oh, shut think. up, Sally. I've heard enough. I was warned about you from the beginning. Should have listened. Be 
being so friendly with a father, I mean, it could upset some children, you know. You being a foster mother like it could make them feel, I don't know, sort of uneasy. Well, I don't see why it should. Come to think of it, she said no about it. Oh. What's that supposed to mean? It sounds ominous. Oh, nothing, just... Oh. Oh, oh speak of the Sorry devil. Oh, hello. I can't stay long, I'm parked on a bus stop. How do you feel about dining out in style tonight? And I won't take no for an answer. Oh, two nights on the trot? Don't know whether I can keep up the pace. But beans I've only got beef burgers or fish fingers for his tea, go on, you've talked me into it. Good, because I've already booked the table. <laughs> now, a fellow at work recommended the place. It's called the, uh, the Greenvale Hotel. Do you know it at all? Yes, I know it all right. And we'll take your Jenny with us. I've already asked her. She wants to go to a youth club tonight, apparently. The one opposite you. Oh, it's the community centre. Yeah. Well, so long as you've asked her, I don't want her to feel out of it. I mean, she comes before you, you know. Get your best frock on, and I'll pick you up at seven. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, he must be keen. What's the matter with it? Remember the Greenvale Hotel? Last time I was there, I was cutting my wedding cake with Len. Tower reception. Happiest day of my life. Oh, Rita. Life, funny. Hi. Hi. I was Baldwin. I don't know. Just part the motor. Give Mrs. Bishop the invoice. Go on, you coward. We've got a squatter. I'll give you five minutes, OK? Kevin? I mean what I said. No point hanging mouth. Besides, I've got work to do. Kevin, will you just listen to me? It's about last night. Oh, here we go. Suppose you stopped in all night watching television, and then you wash your hair. No, I didn't. You were right. I did see Alex. I had a drink with him at the Flying Horse. Yeah, couldn't really deny it, seeing as you were seen. And he had his arm around you. You just shut up and listen to me for a minute. I arranged to see Alex because ever since I've met you, he still keeps pestering me and fanning me and hanging around our street on his motorbike. I told him umpteen times I'm not interested, but he takes no notice. So I saw him last night to tell him once and for all that there's nothing doing. Because I have a regular boyfriend. That's you. I was going to tell you, Kevin. Did you honest? Yeah, of course I did. And he got the message, look. To my Sally, love from Alex the Great, Will, September 1985. You're a big daft Wally, Kevin Webster. But I love you. First person what's ever said that to me. <laughs> right. I am a big daft Wally. No, I'll wash it for you. Give us a kiss. Oh, what's the matter with you, Jack? You can't keep still. I'm going cold turkey, aren't I? I've not had a fact for nearly four hours. Four hours, it feels like. Four flaming weeks. I'm nearly to breaking point. Oh, aye, it's that stop smoking day, Lark, isn't it? I thought my sales were down. Probably sell double tomorrow. Help yourself, Jack. There's a packet on the table. I know. Oh, it's beautiful. No, no, I'm going to give it up for one day and my name isn't there, you see? I'm even forgetting to my own name. Well, get yourself a form then. You're making me feel nervous. No way, not without a beer of blowing smoke in my face. You do it on purpose, you know. That woman loves to see me suffer. I bet she'd even smoke two fags at once. Well, go and lock yourself in the cellar then till opening time. No, no. I'll go for a walk. It's a park round here, isn't it? I'll go feed the ducks. And if the craving gets too much, I can fling myself in. No, oh, no, Jack, don't do that. Oh, no, no, please, Jack, no. <laughs> Why, would, would you both miss me? No, it's the little ducks I'm thinking of. You frighten the life out of them. I'm worried he'd fetch crates up for opening time. Typical, isn't it, eh? Right, I'm off. Quack, 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 quack. Come on, little duck. Here's your Uncle Jack in the back. <laughs> hey, what a character. Right, I'm off as well, but... Everything's cleared up. See you later. Chuck. You're playing the blind. I'll go and get your feet up. Oh, I wish I could. I've got a load of housework to do. I've been helping the old fella across the landing, you know, to pack his stuff up. He's moving down south to his daughters. I'll miss him, you know. See you later. See you, Gloria. Try, Rilda. Hello, love. Oh, what is the matter, Rilda? I usually rely on you every morning to cheer me up. You're better than a tonic most days. Well, it's nice of you to say so, I'm sure. I do try to look on the bright side of things, but... 
Well, it's just that me and Kevin had words last night and he's gone and left home. Oh. I did think he might have shown his cheeky little face again this morning, but not a dicky bird. I don't like being on my own. The house is too big just for one. Oh, I will miss him, I will, really. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, Hilda. Well, in my book, Kevin's the nicest lad that comes in here. <laughs> and he thinks the world of you, you know. Oh, I've often heard him sticking up for you and other folk have been... Well, I, I bet you any money he's back before very long. I hope you're right, Gloria. Do you know, you've cheered me up a bit. Well, they say a trouble half to trouble shared, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Tell her then, love. Child. Well, that's another day over. Hey, Kevin, those brake liners coming. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for them. Good. It's a funny old day, isn't it? Aye. Sorry about this morning, Bray. Oh, forget it, mate. I was keeping here once, remember? Yeah. Women. Any money for it? Of course they are, I think. Hey, where are you dusting down tonight? Have you got fixed up yet? Yeah, place on Balaclava Street. Uh, well, don't forget, if you get stuck, as always, our sofa. That's oh, it. Uh, we go back to Mrs. Ogden's, can I? We're round there and out, pick up some of my gear. I don't think you'll even talk to me after all those things I said. So you won't talk, eh? Well, I know of a nice, quiet jail built for people like you. Oh, hello, Kevin. Mrs. Ogden. All right. Yes, thanks. Have a better. There. Uh, just come and pick my gear up. Oh. Oh, well, I, I hope you found somewhere nice to live. Yeah. Oh, my Pimlet's on Balaclava Street. Oh, she's still with us. I hope you like kippers, then. Kippers? Yeah, well, she serves them up for breakfast every morning. Got a brother in the Isle of Man, sends her a bucket full every week. She's a nice old soul, though. I, uh, I meant to ask, how's your friend doing in Oswell? Oh, she's not so bad, thanks. Do you know, Kevin, you're the only one to ask about poor Ada. Oh, uh, before I forget, Here's my rent. Oh, thanks very much, love. I've, uh, I've done all your washing and ironing. It's all neatly laid out on your bed. Oh. I'd like you to look smart. Thanks. Oh, and I, uh, I owe you an apology. You're right. Sally was with another lad last night. Oh, that's all right, Kevin. You've seen Sally, then? Yeah, yeah, we've, uh, we've sorted it out, like, she was just telling him to stop pestering her because she was going out with me, like. Oh, I see. Well, I'm pleased for you. Hope you'll both be very happy together. With a bit of luck, she won't turn out like her mother. Right, I'll, uh, I'll be going then. And, uh, thanks for everything. Someone smells good. It's tater ash. I was just making a bit for... for me tea. My favourite. One and a half miss you cooking. Expecting company? No. This is all for me, innit? I, I, I made your bed up and put a hot water bottle in. Just in case. I hate kippers. You little like old belter. I could never <laughs> leave you, Mrs. O. I'll, I'll put your tea out. <laughs> All I'm saying is be careful. This bloke who's sending you roses could be a right nutter. It is you, Jack. Oh, now give over, Betty. I'm as sane as the next man. Not oh, my day, is it? No, Mr. Sudren's right. Sooner or later, this fellow's going to arrange a meeting, and when he does, let me know, and I'll come along to offer a bit of muscle. I'll see you. <laughs> Oh, now give over, Mike. I'm, I'm on the wagon, aren't I? I'm not going to smoke for nearly 12 hours and I'll get through the day, I know. Hey, I'll take my sadness for when you wake up in the middle of the night with a screaming abdomen. <laughs> well, thanks for a smashing evening. Yeah, it's a great place, that, isn't it, that hotel? What's it, the Greenvale? The Greenvale, yes. And it did me good to get out of the house. Right. Now, if I can get my hands on a couple of tickets for Ibiza, you're coming with me, right? In London? No, oh, it's coming to Manchester. Oh. Got a date, then? On one condition. You make it three tickets. Three tickets it is. Look, he's probably some harmless fella that's just too shy to chat me up, that's all. But on the other hand, sending you roses could be his plan to lead you into a false sense of security. It's an old enemy ploy. And when you do arrange to meet him at a venue of his choosing, tap! 
Got you, you call. Give up, Percy. A friend in me. Never mind, Claudia. Look, can you find out who it is? You're still running this home watch scheme, aren't you? Show us how good you are. Do a bit of the Sherlock Holmes stuff. Hey, don't you mean that? Uh, called you out there? Get off! <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Betty. Surveillance. I'll keep a vigilant eye on these premises, especially in the early hours. And next time he sets foot in this street, I'll have him. No danger. Hey, kiddo. Looks like our mystery could soon be solved. It's exciting, isn't it? I'll let you know, Bet. When I find out just who he is. By the heck. You're a lot better sight first thing in the morning now. Vera's dead to your pot, darling. That's a fact. Well, don't just stand there. Come and help me before I drop it. More than willing. Are you two taking up a patch, you dancing? No, no, just being a gentleman, coming to the assistance of a young lady. A gentleman, eh? And I thought you were a trendy dosser. Percy's on duty, he'll be glad to hear. He'd be shot at dawn if he weren't. His curtains were twitching when I brought the milk in. Then again, just now, little snoop. He can snoop as much as he likes if he finds whoever it is keeps sending me those roses. It's all getting a bit... Creepy. Oh, yeah. I feel as if somebody's watching me. Well, somebody must be, mustn't they? I can fun. feel his eyes on me, yeah. Anyway, Percy's wasted his time. There was no rose on the step this morning. Yeah, well, they won't be, will they? Because whoever's doing it will have spotted Percy. Not only his curtains twitching. I saw him going in the corner shop with a pair of field glasses slung round his neck. And he reckoned Monty used to send him out to keep his eye on Rommel. Couldn't keep his eye on Blackfield Tower from the top of Woolworth. Anyway, I've decided. If another rose does arrive, I'm not even going to pick it up. It can lie there on the step and wither. That should put a stop to it. Yeah, it'll be like a grave, won't it? The front step. Full of withered roses. You're not breaking the habits of a lifetime and getting emotional, are you, Jack? No, I don't. It will, won't it? I just think that'll be very sad. Hey, come on. Is it time? I'm not in a rush. It's only English first period this morning anyway. That good at it, are we? We don't have to study it anymore. I can talk English, can't I? That's all it's for. And what about writing it? And I mean writing it properly, so you can write a good letter and that. And what will I want to write it proper for? If, properly. If I'm unemployed. Well, you'll be able to write to get a job, won't you? So come on, get your skates on. Can't you move any quicker than that? Because I don't want to be late, even if you do. It's a bad habit to get into. You might have put this in kitchen. Tidiness is next but one to godliness. Right, can we go now? If you finish criticising me, we can. Just a minute, Jenny. What's up with you this morning? I'm just fed up with school. Well, everybody gets fed up with school at some time or another. Till they leave, that is. Then they want to go back. And I'm sorry if that sounds like more criticism. Actually, it's good advice. Is that all that's bugging you? School? What do you think? I've no idea. Well, you should have somebody as clever as you. Morning, Mrs. Roberts. Morning. Here we are with your favourite piece of furniture. What are you insinuating? Nothing. We don't know how to insinuate, do we, Curly? No, we're just a couple of humble, ignorant workmen. Right, then get up them stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got really dirty <laughs> mind, you two, honestly. Hello, lovely. How's it going? Oh, all right. Apart from the cheeky work force. Oh, is that a king size mattress? Yeah. Very sexy. D don't encourage them, girl, please. <laughs> oh, hey, well, your carpet looks nice and bright. Yeah, it is so much to brighten this place up. Oh, it's not what I wanted, girl. Number 11, Coronation Street. I had thought of summit. Well, summit with a lounge, with the sun shining through the window. The nice little cherry tree and blossom at the bottom of the garden. I don't doubt for one minute that it won't all come in the course of time. Do you think so? That is, if you stay the course, of course. Don't you think I will, or Summit? Well, to cross my mind. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong, aren't I, dearest daughter? Despite this temporary hiccup in my grand design. Well, I hope so, because I've never seen you looking better. I've never felt better at all. Do you know, there's something to be said for marrying a grocer. You're never short of a square meal. <laughs> No, seriously. I think Alf's very good for me. He's really very appreciative. And that's very good for a girl's ego. <laughs> I started observations at 0630 hours precisely. 
What was the cracker dawn, eh, Percy? That's when he catched the enemy napping, as Jerry could very well testify. Who's Jerry? Who's Jerry? It's all right, Gloria. It's not important. Go on, Percy. Although, why we're bothering with all this palaver when you didn't see nobody beats me? It's what's called a debriefing, you see. When you've had a briefing, you've got to have a debriefing. Of course you have. I Sorry. Mean, the first note at 0645 hours. The street was empty. Percy? Hmm? If the street were empty, why did you bother making a note of it? Good question. I was making observations and I observed the street was empty, so I made a note of it. Well, it's very logical, is that? Which only a fellow like him would understand. That was very good, Percy. Thank you. Shut up, Jack. I'm not sure what you're doing here anyway. I'm just enjoying myself. May I continue? If you must. I told 713 hours, the paper girl from the cabin put a paper in every house in the street by the Duckworths. Not paid your paper bill again, Jacko? Oh, no, just a temporary misunderstanding, you know. At 0725 hours, a rather unusual incident occurred. A what? Oh, go on, Percy. A female jogger and a male jogger arrived outside the corner shop from opposite directions. They kissed passionately, they had an animated conversation, they kissed passionately again and jogged off in opposite directions at 0729 hours. Well, they're a filthy pair of joggers. Especially at 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Haven't I should take up jogging? Did you recognise them? No. So, nobody ever came near the rover's front door? Only the paper girl. Hello, mm. love. What's this? Union meeting. Oh, Mr Sugden didn't see anybody in the street this morning, Betty. No wonder, love. Your admirer's up to his old tricks again on the back. Where did you find this? Back doorstep just now. Fooled you, Percy. Well, that's not playing the game, is it? That's a real Jerry trick. Be in the bar of the Bird's Nest Hotel tonight at eight, and I will reveal myself to you. Oh, he's a flasher. He's a nutter. I'm beginning to think he is. No, you're not going to go and meet him, are you, lovey? I mean, it, it could be dangerous, you know. No, I'm not, Betty. I'm sick to the back teeth of the old business. I think he must be having me on. Mm. Well, he's got a sick sense of humour. I think he's right, you know, not going. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm. It seems a pity, though, not to find out who he was. Mm. <coughs> Spent a lot of brass on these roses. He must have a bob or two. I've just had an idea. Oh, God, no. Now, I could go with Miss Todd to the bird's nest. And when the culprit reveals himself, I could make a citizen's arrest. I don't think so, Percy. I don't want you upsetting yourself if he is a flasher. That'll be the day. Well, as I was saying, it's like a, I could go along as a bodyguard. You know, like, like a minder, just in case the fellow's a bit of a comic. I don't think so, Jack. Go on, you've got now to lose. I don't know, he might just be famous football. You'll be laughing. Some chance of that. Yeah, but if he is a bit of a dead leg, I'll be there to protect you. Either way, be a bit of a giggle, won't it, eh? <laughs> like I say, could be the man of your dreams. I don't know. Well, it's obviously a man of taste and sensitivity, isn't he? Well, he must be all them roses. Oh, why not? I'm short of a bit of fun in my life. Aren't we all, darling? <laughs> It's like walking on eggshells sometimes. You never know if you might be doing the wrong thing or saying it and upsetting her. It's a very difficult age, and particularly when you've got Jenny's problems. I know, but sometimes I think she's overdoing it. Oh, I remember I was very mixed up in my teens. In fact, I went on being mixed up until my late uh, 30s, at the very least. I know. Life's not easy. Mm. As maybe here will tell you, hour after hour, if you'll only listen. <laughs> tell you what. How oh, you're still mixed up. What are you now? In your fifties? Oh, of course, I'm mixed up. Well, isn't everybody? I mean, show me the person who can honestly say they've cracked it. Cracked what, maybe? Oh, life. Living. It's just all so unpredictable, isn't it? I mean, you wake up in the morning and the sun's streaming through the windows and you think, oh, fine, I'm really going to enjoy today. I'm going to be really carefree and happy. You raise your head off the pillow and what's happened? What? I'm all agog. You've got a stiff neck. So, instead of enjoying the day, you're going to spend it in agony. Well, I mean, what's the point of that? How can anybody think they're coping when life can do that to you? And then my stiff neck is just a, a footling example of life's vicissitudes. Is it? Oh. She's studying all-level English, you know. I know. I mean, for stiff neck, you can substitute murder, rape, cancer, War, divorce, not to mention broken dreams and broken hearts. Mavis, are you going for your dinner? Oh, yes, 
of course I am. Well, go before you drive me to suicide. Look, it was you that broached the subject. I know, and I regret it on your bike. Dismissing the profit doesn't destroy the property. So now you know. Oh, oh sorry. Well, hello. Hello. Oh, well, perhaps you'll find Mr. Bradley more congenial. Come to me. Is that what they call a pointed remark? Uh, I think so, yes. Would you like to come out for a drink and a bite to eat? Uh, too late. I've had my dinner. Oh. You can help me with the returns, if you like. Returns? Yes, of the newspapers we haven't sold. Ah, no, I think I'll have a pint and a pie. There you are, and I thought you were a pal. All right, then, what are you doing tonight? Well, nothing specially. Would you like to go out somewhere? Actually, I'd like you to spend some time with Jenny. Why, what's the matter with her? Well, she's been she's a little bit... She's up again, is she? Yes, she is. OK, I'll, uh, I'll come round tonight, shall I? Thank you. There we are, my darlings. That's the belt of all Thanks. What's up with you? Smart costs nothing, Vera. You want to try one, give your face a change. It's so happy working here, it's Jim. Yeah, come off you here, and nobody can be happy in the work. Not unless there's somebody in the city earning a blooming fortune. Sad one of them, so, or else he's licking froth off every pound it serves. Don't talk, that. He can't be one of them, too. They know him. They won't get mixed up with a, well, a roving eye like your Jack, would they? <laughs> oh, hey. What do you think? Not bad. Not bad? I think you've done wonders with it. it it's, it's, it's very nice, yes. Very nice. Oh. Well, for someone who hasn't had much practice at nest building, I think I've done rather well in the circumstances. A new suite would have made all the difference, sir. So. Well, then you can find one you like. Oh, I can't. That's not right, me, is it? Oh, it's not a permanent condition, that. <laughs> right, all done and dusted. All right, you've been well and truly removed. Thanks, lad. You've done a very good job. Though I can't say I took too kindly at you sniggering at my lingerie. Uh, that, that was me mate, Mrs. Roberts. You see, he still thinks that women wear string vests and long johns uh, <laughs> like him. He's led a very sheltered life, you see. <laughs> Look, don't worry, Curly. You're probably just a lead developer like my lovely husband's here. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, uh, how much do we say it was? 20 quid, wasn't it? 30. Oh, oh can we agree on that? Uh, you're well on the way to being millionaires already. Now, you know confessions to make, have you? You're not broken note to note. They're not likely to admit it if they had, now, would you? Of course we would. We are ridiculously honest. God, new breeds of fella. <laughs> Thanks very much. Now, remember the name, cheap and cheerful. So when the shine wears off and one of you wants to move out, I mean, I'm not trying to alarm you, but uh, people tend not to stop here very long. Mm. Have a nice day now. Thanks again. Cheers. Cheerio. Bye. Bye-bye. That's not going to happen, is it? Of it's not. Come here, you damn beggar. Mm. <laughs> Eve, you know, love. What? I can't believe how lucky I am. I've been married to you for less than three months and it's transformed my life. Do you know, it's transformed mine and all. Mm. Eve. Alf? Yes, love? Why don't we have our swarming party? Oh, hey, that's not a bad idea, that. <gasps> Listen, you can have anything you like. Oh, mm. right. She's in, is she? Yes, but she's talking about going out. Uh, would you like me to make myself scarce? No, why should you? It's your house. It's up to us to find somewhere to talk if we have to. Well, I don't mind. No, Rita, thank you for now. Okay. Hi. What are you doing here? Just come to see how you were doing. Really? Yeah. How are you doing? I'm no different than last time you saw me. A couple of days ago, weren't it? What's that you're making there? A skirt. Oh, she's a wizard with a needle and cotton. Oh, right. I can do something right then, can I? I don't think that's any way to talk to Rita, do you, Jenny? What did I say? What did I say? We had a bit of a row this morning. Some of them nothing. You know, neither of us at our best at breakfast, you know. All right, Dad? As long as that's all it was. What else could it have been? I don't know. You tell me. Are you sure you can see how I am? Or were you put up to it by her? Jenny. You were, weren't you? What did she tell you? That I was being an unruly teenager again? I said nothing of the sort. Oh, but you did tell him something. I told him there was something bothering you and I didn't know what it was. Is there something bothering you, Jenny? No. Then why are you going round in a permanent soak and talk about touching? I'm not, Dad, honest. She's exaggerating. I don't think Rita exaggerates, Jenny. Oh, you would take her side in it, wouldn't you? She's the real reason you're here. She's the reason you're always here. It's the only time I ever see you when you're picking her up to take her out. I'll well, take you out as well. Twice. Well, all right, then. I'll take you out somewhere tomorrow night, if you like. I'm singing with the band tomorrow night, as I must have told you half a dozen times. But it's only me, so you've forgotten. You wouldn't have forgotten if it was Rita Fairclough. Hey. I've done you a favour, Dad, aren't I, coming to live no, here? that's enough. Oh, dear. Bye. It's like walking on eggshells dealing with women. Gin and tonic, 
What a miserable night. Say that again. I wonder how Gloria's doing. Better than us. <laughs> Do you think them two are alive? Doubtful. God, I'm bored. Isn't it funny how sometimes you can't think of anything to talk about? Yes. <laughs> and other times you go babbling on ten to the dozen. Yes. I knew a girl once and she always used to have a, a list of subjects, like topics of conversation for if it got hard going when she was out with the man. Good idea. Yeah. Still, that's one of the advantages of friendship, isn't it? What is? Well, you, you don't have to make conversation. I mean, even the silences are companionable. Yes. Oh, Rita! Oh, what a surprise! How nice to see you. Here, here. What are you having to drink? Oh, well, I'll have a vodka and tonic. Oh, well, I'll I insist. insist. Oh, oh thank you. Oh. Vodka and tonic, right, all of them. What's up with you both? You think I'm a long lost mother? It's Emily. Oh, she is hard work sometimes. Oh, yes. Is that a fact? Well, that's why I was so glad to see you. Can cheer us up. Oh, you must be joking. Why? What's the matter? My little plan to get Alan to give Jenny a shake, you know. Finished up with them both falling out. Do you know, I think Jenny thinks I'm monopolising her, Dad. Well, you are rather, aren't you? Maybe. I'll have to try to be a lot more careful in future. There you are, Rita. Thank you. Well, isn't this nice? <laughs> We've got Rita feeling miserable now. Did, uh, did you want something? It's you, isn't it? I'm sorry? Come on, stop kidding. Kidding? Supposing I said roses to you. Roses? You haven't been sending me roses. No. I don't even know you, do I? I'm sorry. I, I hope I haven't embarrassed you. It's just, you see, somebody who has been sending me roses to where I work at the Rover's Return in Coronation Street. Well, he asked me to meet him here and I thought it might have been you. It isn't. No. Sorry. Sorry I couldn't help. Yeah. Him. Is that right? I don't think he's going to turn up. You reckon? Well, he's a bit late, isn't he? Everything comes to her what waits, darling. What have you done up? Like a dog's dinner for? You mean uh, the best dressed man of the year, don't you? Have you guessed? You're not trying to tell me it's you that's been sending those roses. Who else but? <laughs> that's ridiculous. I don't believe you. 
Well, what's so flipping ridiculous about it? I'm just as capable as the next fella of sending a girl flowers. It were me what sent you them roses. Prove it. You can't prove it, can I? Yes, I can. I knew there was something going on with Percy Sugden this morning, and that's why I switched the roles to the Baxter. Now, nobody else knew that Percy were on the lookout, did they? No. Well, they had. How much proof do you want? Well, I think you've got nerve, Jack. Leading me on like that, embarrassing me. Leading me on? What? Two quid a rose? I would, I would send you any messages, darling, wouldn't I? Telling you how much I fancied you, which I do. But I was saying it with roses. Well, I'm saying this to your face, Jack Duckworth. Get lost. It was a mean, dirty trick. I don't go out with married men. I wouldn't go out with you if you were single. Not even if you had red roses growing out of your ears. No, all, all, all right. It was a bit over the top. How else could I get to you? I mean, I, I knew you'd turn me down if I asked you for a date. I was getting desperate. I, went, I was driven to it, Gloria. I was driven to it. I mean, I, I couldn't just worship you from afar. It was breaking me up. You're having me on. Well, I've never gone to these lengths for a woman before. I've never had to. I mean, it's all okay, I mean, you're not so thrilled about it. But you're here now, aren't you? The least you can do is give us a couple of hours of your company. Please. Jack Duckworth, you're a lying, rat-faced dog. What are you? Irresistible. What's your poison? Gin and tonic. Double. You won't be sorry. You'll only upset yourself, mate, looking at her. God, she is, yeah. She adores me, you know. Yeah. Morning. Morning. What's this? Is that scrapbook we were talking about? From when I was in the tatty end of showbiz. I've rooted it out for you to have a look at, if you want. I thought you'd have been mad at me. I am. Oh. Oh, not so much on my account. But your dad's been coming over here week after week to try and plan a future for you. He deserves better than having it all flung back in his face. I only said he was yes, seeing... Yes, we know what you said. And if we have been seeing a lot of each other, what do you think we talk about? Politics? Greyhound racing? Price of spuds? Me. You. I'm sorry, then, for what I said. I am. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You had some fabulous claws. Have you still got them? Some of them. Are you sure, me? Well, not right now. They tend to look a bit out of place at breakfast table. Sometime now. Sometime. Hey, he says, can we save him a cup of tea till he's finished sorting the shelves out? Well, so with him. He's not supposed to even be on till tonight. Well, perhaps he's turning into a workaholic. Is that somebody that likes working with alcohol? In Jack's case, yeah. <laughs> just, just the girl. One mention of roses and I shall be straight back out of that door. Look, I just want you to catch it before you sit out to the others like... You won't, you won't say how about last night, will you? It was me that was sending them. Oh, you don't want Bet and Betty to know. Yeah, but they might not share our sense of humour, might they? I mean, they might not appreciate it. It was like a gag between mates. And then I won't like to get back to Alvira because she hasn't got a sense of humour where I'm concerned. So what am I supposed to say? Well, can't you say that we, we waited and nobody turned up? Go on. I wasn't going to tell them anyway. Hey, great. I knew you wouldn't because we made it. Oh, is that what we are? Of course. Well, I'll tell you this, Jack. Any more tricks, any more roses, any more anything of that sort, and you and me could just end up sworn enemies. Oh, I'll give over. I've got enough of them. Well, look at it from my point of view, Jack. I don't want to feel I'm working with somebody who's going to be conniving and scheming to get me on my own all the no, time. No, of course you don't. No. Somebody I can't trust. You can trust me. No more roses. Well, thanks. It costed me a fortune anyway. You are hopeless. Yeah, ma'am. <laughs> well, is it right what he said? No time, no mystery, ma'am. No mystery, ma'am. What a rotten swiss. Ah, oh, come on, lovey. Have a cup of tea. Oh, thanks, Betty. Have you done then yet? I have that. Mm. Just got time for a cup and I'll be off then, yeah. Betty. Well, they don't like 
had been canned in it. So you sure yeah, you didn't no. miss it? Oh, yeah. It was a right quiet bar, wasn't it? Oh, that was the grave. There was just one chap who looked as though he might have been in the habit of sending roses to women he didn't know. You have a green fly? I didn't get close enough to find out, but he looked the sort, you know, mm. a real flash Harry. But was he that fellow you were talking to when he first come in? No, you might not have seen him. He was all uh, cheap aftershave, oh, you know, oh. flared trousers. It was very sad, really. I don't know whether it was to stop you noticing his ball patch or the way he was holding in his beer belly. But either way, it didn't work. <laughs> Did you see him? No, I don't think I saw him, as you know. Sounds like you might have had a lucky escape then to me, lovey. I think I did. And have you not got a size in between? No, just the small and, well, a larger sports you'd call them. But I mean, they're not that large. They're just larger than the small. No, you see, for my purpose, I want a sort of medium. Do you know, I bet you're a devil to sell shoes to. <laughs> I'm not buying shoes, I'm buying paper clips. Go on, then, I'll have the large. And can I have a written receipt, please? Oh, paper clip it to his ear. <laughs> Hello, Emily. Hello. Now, what can we do for you on this fine morning? Well, I was wondering if I could just have a word with Mavis, oh. actually. I wondered whether you were going to the Roberts' housewarming this mm. evening. Yes, well, I, I was going to ask you the same thing. Oh, well, well, I am, if anybody's interested. No, only uh, I thought we might go together. Yes, yes, it's awful walking into a party on your own. Mm. You know, it never bothers me. What you want to do, you want to say to yourself, well, they've invited me, so they must want me to be there. Now, that way, you're sailing full of confidence. Yes, well, um, what time shall I call? About half past seven? Yes, and we'll fortify ourselves with a sherry before we go. <laughs> Alcohol shouldn't be necessary. All you need is a positive attitude. Your seat. Thank you. Are you going my way, Mrs Bishop? Uh, I suppose I am, yes. Only, I, I was thinking Goodbye. of taking my ukulele. What do you think? When you brought it... it oh, <laughs> what about you? What about me? Well, are you going? I mean, you've been invited, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I've been invited. You don't sound too keen. Well, to be honest, I'm not. As a matter of fact, I've got what is generally known as a prior engagement. Mm -hmm. With Jenny's father? It is, as a matter of fact. Would you like to know where we're going? Oh, go on, if you want to tell me. I do, to stop your evil imagination running riot with you. I'm going to watch Jenny and her group play at the school disco. Oof. Well, I hope you have a nice time. I hope Jenny has a nice time seeing us there. That's the object of the exercise. Hello, love. Hello, love. Eh? Hey, I hope you don't want any dinner, because I've got lots on my mind today. Uh, well, no. No, uh, no I thought you'd have uh, done some preparations. I mean, it's you that wanted this party, wasn't oh, it? Oh, don't get our teams up. <gasps> You know what they say, it'll be all right on the night. Yeah, no, it won't. Well, no, it won't, will it, unless you've done the preparations. Oh, I'll say. Now, come on, good parties, like good marriages. They're made in heaven, not in the back kitchen, eh? <laughs> anyway, I bet you got a lot of stuff in the shop that's past the sell-by date. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get rid of some of it. Well, no, I haven't, as a matter of fact. Anyway, if we get stuff from the shop all the time, it's going to cost a blooming fortune. <laughs> No, no, because you can. Now, don't get your knickers in a twist. I have a flair for parties. I always have had. Mm. Oh, not interrupting anything, have I? Not so I'd notice, no. Tell him I'm a dab hand at parties, will you? Not going to him or giving him. <laughs> Both. Listen, I will provide all the sparkle, all the razzmatazz. Oh, you've got a provider, the spirits, the wines, lagers. All beer. right, all right, all right. I'll come round this afternoon. Anyway, I better get off. Um, See you tonight, then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you won't see Brian, because we couldn't get a babysitter, so oh. we tossed up an eye one. I should think you did and all. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll like to see you. All <laughs> right, lovely. Bye! Oh. Stop worrying! Bye. Honestly, he's the world's greatest warrior, Alfie. He could win competitions at it. Well, it's nice to see you. Do you want a coffee or something? No, no, I just came to see how you settled in. Oh, we soon settled us gypsies. <laughs> Looks like it. Hey, hey, listen, I've just had a thought. Now, you must be a dab hand at catering. I mean, with that cafe of yours, day in, day out. No, you must be second nature to you, catering. This sounds like you're after something. <laughs> no, no. I was just wondering that, well, you must sometimes have some little bits and pieces left over, you know, sausage rolls, meat pies. What the sort of stuff that would go down very well at parties? Hey, it's not very much better. Ah, just yes. right. Smash him. There you go. You know... There's something quite sad about this business, you know, dealing with people's possessions and furniture. Yeah, there's not enough cash in it for us, that's the sad part about it. No, no, I mean, take Council Roberts, for example. I mean, what we moved yesterday constituted all his worldly goods, right? Bad his shop. No, no, I mean, his personal stuff, his private property that he's accumulated over the years. And yet, it didn't amount to much, did it? I mean, there's nothing there of great value. A load of rubbish, if you ask me. Yeah. 
And that, Terry, is the fate of all of us. To lavish care and attention on possessions that when we die or move are revealed to be what they really are. A load of old rubbish. So, what's the answer, short of never dying or moving house? There isn't one. I'll get them. Right, Give us two lagers, Dorian. Have you got any sandwiches, love? Oh, well, I can make you one, yeah. Cheese, ham. Cheese is a fine, love. Yeah. Hey, I'll have the same while you're up there. Hey, we're thinking about you last night. You know them roses you've been getting? Yeah. Well, I've been reading this book about Mills and Bone, you know. They're the favourite writers, you know. Yeah, I know, you lent me one. Oh, you didn't like them, did you? No. Mind you, you're not romantic like I am. Anyway, this one I'm reading now, it's, it's all about this beautiful girl. And uh, what do they call it when they have to work? Unemployed. An heiress, yeah, that's it, an heiress. Anyway, she's been getting all these unexpected roses. Do you think that's a coincidence, eh? It is, yeah. I'll uh, just get your sandwiches. I do, I think yeah. it's a coincidence. Oh. 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 Hello, Hello, love. I was hoping I'd find you. Yeah. Usual. Uh, yes, please, Betty. Right. Honey, would you be terribly offended if I couldn't come tonight? Oh, no, yeah, I'd be disappointed. Right? Well, you know Jenny that I'm fostering? Mm -hmm. Well, I promised to go with her dad to see her in a group yes, playing tonight. Yes, I can vouch for that. <laughs> oh, hello, Alan. Yeah, well, no problem. Bring him with you. I mean, go to see Jenny first, then come on to the party afterwards. Well, that's very kind of it. I don't think uh, Jenny's do goes on late, does it? Well, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, there's no problem. You know where we are, don't you? I'll we'll see you later. OK, yeah. cheers. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks, love. Uh, can I get you a drink, Alan? Um, no, I've got one, thanks. OK. Thanks, thanks Betty. Yeah. Right, then, well, I'd better put the best suit on then, aren't I? Well, uh, I wouldn't go to too much trouble. You didn't want to go, did you? I'll pop your foot in it. I don't. Well, no, no, perhaps I should go. We could pop him for half an hour, eh? Good afternoon. Afternoon, Chuck, what are you having? Nothing, thanks. I have uh, <laughs> this to deliver. Barmaid, Rover's Return, Coronation Street. I've got right shop, haven't I? You have, love, yes. Uh, Betty, where's Gloria? I think she's in the back. Can I uh, leave it with you then? Well, you can if you tell us who sent it. Sorry, love. Different department, that is. I just uh, deliver them. Bye now. Bye, love. Well, he hasn't stopped sending them, whoever he is. Wow. Hold the fort for a minute, will you, Betty, love? Right. Oh, no. Afraid so. Fella just delivered it. Oh, what fella? Flower shop fella. Acting under orders and he didn't know who'd given them. Well, I know. You do? I thought nobody had turned up. Nobody turned up, only Jack. No. Yeah. He got the idea from some daft book Vera's been reading. Jack. Oh, it's not funny, Bet. No. I told him this morning, all right, I said a joke's a joke, but no more. And now look. Oh, dear. And I meant it. <sighs> I'm just fed up with his stupid tricks. Just wait till I see him. I'll give him roses, all right. <laughs> This is it then. Ideal Homes, 1958. Hey, don't be rude. She were always rude. I've taken a notice. Well, I couldn't live without wallpaper, and that's not being rude, that's being honest. Give us a chance, Sandra. We only moved in yesterday. Of course she did. Hey, you haven't got much of a view, have you? <laughs> she has, if she sticks her head out the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Any road, what does she want a view for? She's got a telly, like everyone else. <laughs> it's all right. Look, I know it's not Shangri-La, but it's the nearest I'm likely to get to it. It's very nice. Do you know, I'd do a swap with you any day. <laughs> so you're still wed to him, are you? Of course I'm still wed to him. Oh, well, I've lost my bet then. Oh, you cheeky! I'm only <laughs> joking. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're looking very well on it, well. isn't she, eh? Ah, she is. Do you know, you should have done it years ago. I wasn't? tried doing it years ago. I tried quite a few times. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, lovely, lovely. Now you remember the girls, don't you, Irene, Sandra? Yeah, of course I do. Yes, nice to see you again. And you. <laughs> Are we ashore? Oh, no, no. I, I mean, we were expecting you. you know, I'd just forgotten you were coming, like. Uh, anyway, I've, uh, I've brought a few bottles. Oh, it should be enough. Oh, yeah. lovely. Thank you. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see you later on, then. What are you doing? See you too. Hey, you didn't know we were coming, did he? No. Hey, oh. they're into right lot here. We'll shift this between us for the rest of right. That's why I crept out early on and made one or two arrangements of my own. Walk this way. <laughs> Ta -da! <laughs> well, I think he looks great. <laughs> well, I used to wear it more for protection. Once I got this and my war paint on, I didn't feel quite so nervous. 
Oh, no. I'll go, shall I? Uh, if it's milk, fella, tell him I'll pay double next week. Oh, all right. Yeah. There's me to it. I just thought it. You decided to get dressed up after all, then? <laughs> I've just been showing your daughter how we used to dress in the good old days. Oh, it looks great. Well, thanks, but uh, I think I'll go and change. This is one time I wasn't expecting an audience. Rita, can I borrow this jacket for tonight? What, that? Oh, go on, please. Well, perhaps Rita doesn't want it spoiling, Jenny. No, no, we will only be stuck it back at wardrobe. I don't see why not. Go on, then. Still mad at him? Furious. Good. In there. Hey, what's up? Bet said you wanted one. What's that? Well, to some folk, it's a rose. To me, it's a damn right insult. Hey? Oh, come on, Jack. I thought I'd made it clear enough I wanted no more of it, and then straight after, what you go and do? Well, this. That's going to do me, honest. You're a liar. I'm not. Well, you were lying to me before. Why should I believe you now? I, 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 Only can I'm... you once and for all get it into your thick head that I don't want this. I don't want any more of them. And I don't want anything else to do with you either. Uh, excuse me. I don't like interrupting a good, good row, but there's a gentleman out here once serving, and he's very particular. He'll only be served by blondes called Gloria. Oh, flipping it. <laughs> That's the gentleman there. Um, didn't I see you last night? Yeah. Did you guess who'd sent it then? The rose. Didn't you get it? I got it. I hope you didn't mind life. <laughs> Getting quite used to it, actually. <laughs> well, will you have a drink with me then? Yeah, okay. I shall be expecting an apology, after the way she were calling me. Oh, give over, Jack. You used to be worse. And it should be you apologising to her, from what I've been hearing. So look sharp. See, she has some time to herself, like an hour or two. Have some more, No, I won't really. Don't you, would you prefer I something else? I was certain to know. Are you I sure? Just been talking to What's about you? <laughs> Come on. No, oh, no, I knew you would. Now that's her. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What's wrong with it? It's been working all right till the day. Yeah, well, it's been moved. They're very temperamental, these, you know. I know it should affect me, ukulele. Man, I can easily slip across for it, you know. Well, that won't be necessary, person. He has got a ukulele, then. I thought you were going to tell him, Mucky Joe. Oh, we'll have his banjo out as soon as Luke is your person. It could be a loose connection. It was saying, when I moved, you know, it took me a week to get my television tuned. I kept getting white lines all over it. And what about your ukulele? Was that all right? Oh, yes. I carry that. I won't let anybody else touch it. You are careful, aren't you? Well, Santa, here. Now, sup enough of this and you'll hear music all of your own. I might ask it. Oh, lovely. Oh. Does it for you? Oh. And them leftovers you were after. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You are a darling. Would you put them in the oven? Yeah. Right. What's that doing? Oh, oh. meant in the stereo. And pray no, succeeds, no, otherwise it's Percy on his ukulele oh, and you on your comb with a little bit of loo paper oh. around it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody ready for another? Oh, oh, no, no, top no. No. I knew you. <laughs> Have you put some tonic in there? Yes, I have. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so you yes. got married again then, did you? Yeah. I did, yes. Sir. Not for some years, yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, no, you want to let the dust settle. But then my second husband died, so uh, I was widowed again, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. Hey, you want to get a medical out on your next one then, won't you? <laughs> What about you, Mavis? Oh, I'm not married, no. Oh, living with somebody? No. That's it. It's oh, working. Hey. Well done, Gowsley. Well done. Well done. Well, there's not a lot of noise coming from it, darling. No, well, the table's going round, isn't it? It'll be all right when I get a record. Oh, oh you have to put a record on. Oh, what do you want? Do you want golden oldies or something no. that came before oh. golden oldies? Ukulele lady, have you got that? Some Man Crandall. I'll have a word with Bet, see if it's okay. Well, I wouldn't want you to get into bother. Would tomorrow be better? Are you having second thoughts? Oh, no. Definitely not, no. Well, then. Um, yeah. You're not by any chance wanting to get off early, are you? Well, it's not a lot doing. <laughs> there looks to be plenty doing between you and Fella, my lad. He was wondering if we could go for a meal, that was all. Why? Are you hungry? Well... <laughs> yes, of course you can. What do you mean now? Why not? It's as good a time as any. Go on. Oh, thanks, Ben. Thanks very much. 
two minutes. Well, that last two pints of bitter, is it? Yeah. Please, Mr. Duckworth. I thought you two would have been sucking for now down at Roberts's. It was a favour. My mum's going to be there, isn't she? Oh, she did say she was going to grace the occasion. Huh? Anyway, we weren't asked. <laughs> so we wouldn't have gone if we had been. Yeah, probably not, no. Come on, let's go and get sat down. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Mr. Duckworth. Thanks very much, Bert. I really appreciate it. You don't want me to send Jack to keep his eye on you, do you? Once was enough. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, please. Thanks. See nice you. to meet you. Bye. Well, you did a good job there, Jacko. Even if your intentions were downright evil. Ah, she's a nice girl, isn't she? She certainly is. And there aren't many of us about. I would like to say I've always got a woman here with me. Except when they haven't wanted to get on with me. You never got on with last lot that lived round here. Well, who's fault with that? Look after her was the nicest barney. It was them that were stuck up. That was top and bottom of it. It's all right talking about neighbours, but I mean, where am I? I mean, I shut that door and well, I could be a million miles from anywhere. But you're only round the corner. Yes, I'm just saying what it feels like, Emily. I mean, when I have locked that door, well, I'm just cut off from the world, aren't I? No more than anybody else. Is. Oh, yes, Emily, I am. Anyway, how do you know? I mean, you don't. Your house has always been full of lodgers or husbands. Well, look, next time it be like that, pick up the phone. Me and I will come round, won't we? I'm very lovely, yeah. I can say I'll talk to anybody, mate. Yeah. So will I if there's anybody to talk to, but there usually isn't. Oh, I'm going. I'm sorry. Oh, would you like me to come with oh, you? No, thank you. I'm used to being on my own. <laughs> I can certainly walk home by my own. Thank you. How long have been here? Here, <laughs> yeah, all home cooking. <laughs> Yeah. Very nice to look too, but uh, I won't if you don't mind. I had a touch of dyspepsia earlier on, you know, I've got to be on my guard. Yeah, I should be fine with you. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, they're hot. No, they're hot. Oh, 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 they are hot oh 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 they are h
And while you thought it necessary to stage a big scene and be rude to me and your father in front of all those people, I do not know. You didn't want to come, did you? You just felt guilty. That isn't true. Yes, it is. You didn't want to come. You don't want me to live here. You'd much rather be fair just the two of you. I just get in the road. I don't know where you get these daft ideas from. From looking at you and my dad, that's where. I'm not stupid, you know. Just wait till your dad comes back, Jenny Love. You'll be all right then, Jenny Love. You'll be a family again. You are. No, we're not. Not with you setting your cap at him. I haven't even seen him for eight rotten years. It was me who was coming to see. Me who was getting to know, not you. Whoa, brilliant. Ah, that was probably a wrong number. Your big ugly plates of meat. Oh, somebody wanting a cremation. I've had a few of them recently. I reckon we must have a similar number to an undertaker's. Not the only thing that'll be similar to an undertaker's round here if he don't start getting some flaming work. If it was work, he'll ring back. If it was work, he'll let his fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. Some other jerk's probably got the job of dismantling chats with brick by brick and transporting it to Florida by now. Could have set us up for life, that could. You're getting neurotic. So would you be getting neurotic if you had you for a partner? No, straight up, Colin. How can we run a business if we're not here to run it, eh? We are here. Now we're here, yeah. But when we're out on a job, Curly, my son, in no sense of the word can we said to be here, right? Which means there's nobody to answer the phone or take messages, which means we lose out on work, mate. All right, I concede you've got a point. But at last, it's percolated. It's always percolated. I just don't see the point of having a nervous breakdown over something we can do nothing about. So what do other firms do? Hey? Other firms, what can afford them, have secretaries, answer phones, all manner of sophisticated devices. We can't even afford a kettle that works. Thanks, that's uh, 96, please. Hello, love. Hello, love. Who's me to shake off with me? Not yet, sir. All right. Expect you at the shop if you want to. Oh, no. I'll hang on here, I think. Give us a pint of bitter, will you? Mm -hmm. Have you got anything to eat? I've been uh, flat hunting all morning. Hungry job, is that? Hot pot? Lovely, thanks. Betty, another hot pot, love, while you're at it. OK. Any luck? Uh, well, there's a couple of places. The best one's in Ashdale Road. Needs a lot doing to it, but it's got the sort of space I need, you know. Hey, Glo, Ashdale Road, isn't that where you are, love? Yeah, why? Hey, yeah. what number? 41. Well, not all of it. It's a big old converted house. I don't believe it. He's been to see a flat there this morning. Hey, kid, looks like you could be near to that. Well, I haven't made my mind up yet. The landlord's a bit of a swine, you know, and the hot washer can be dodgy. What, so were you? You're trying to put him off for summer? Listen, Dumbo. I wouldn't mind having him on the other side of my position wall, but on my side come to that. It's for you, love. Oh, that smells good. How's that youngster of yours getting on? I keep in touch, you know, through Rita. Oh, she's all right, thank you, yes. Oh, she's been through a very bad time, but they're very resilient at that age, you know. Well, I'll be able to keep a proper eye on her now. My firm have arranged for me to uh, be based here in Manchester, you see. Oh, well, you'll be a little family again. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I'll tell you the truth. Teenage girls are something of a mystery to me. I mean, when it comes to understanding them, talking their language, I'm a dead loss. <laughs> Don't worry, love. I reckon everybody is. Apart from all the teenage girls. Darling. Do you know a girl called Susan? She says she knows you. Susan? Mm -hmm. oh, you don't mean little Sue Clayton, do you? She works in a bakery down Everton Street. Yeah, that'll be her. Little pest with big ideas. She used to live down the road. Her sister had a thing with her. Well, more than a thing. Oh, big drama, really. Why in the road? Went for an interview there. I got chatting while they were waiting. She says it's not bad, but she can't see herself making Eccles cakes for the rest of her life. Oh, nice one, nice one. I like Eccles cakes. Oh, well, in that case, I'll definitely take the job then. If they offer it to me. Why? Wouldn't you, anyway? I suppose so. There's something to do. Only sometimes I get that cheesed off. I wake up in the morning and I wonder why I bother getting up. What's it to get up for? Me. Well, I'm serious, Kev. It's all right for you. You've got a job you like. I haven't even got a job. Oh, you ought to be with Brian when he's in one of his moods. You know what I mean. At the end of the day, you can look at that car and say, that's working, that is, and it's all down to me. What will I have to say? I did some shopping for my mum. Peel five pound of spuds. Mooch round Arndale Centre for two hours and bought a pair of leg warmers. Oh, yeah, dead satisfying that is. Oh, spot will turn up. I wish people would keep saying that. One minute, though. Well, my look, when I'm 95 and whittled with arthritis like my Auntie Gracie, I'll get off at a job as a trainee bluebell girl. Uh, I hope not. I don't want you swan enough to Paris wearing nothing but half an ostrich. <laughs> yeah, you would stop me, wouldn't you? You're a typical selfish male. So? 
I know which side may go cakes buttered. <laughs> I thought I might pop us here on Sunday. There's a coach goes to Derby, you know, from outside Spencer's news agent. Yeah, that's some of you. I wouldn't mind coming with you, cock, if I could get somebody to stand in here. I'd have to phone her Joni, though, to see if Mrs. Walker's up to seeing us both at once. <laughs> yeah, could be a bit over <laughs> oh, for anybody, could that? Yeah. Hey, up, somebody's cracked it. Gloria. David. Oh, me again. I didn't expect to see you so soon. Well, I was in the area, so I thought I'd pop in, you know. See how much I enjoyed last night. Me too. Really? <clears throat> in that case, I was wondering, when's your next night off? Tomorrow. No, it's not. It's Sunday. Tomorrow's sooner than Sunday, right, Petal? Side suits me better. Betty, would you say this gentleman? Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Are you trying to get me fixed up? You've got it. Eliminate the opposition. That's my motto. You like him? You go for him, as he says. <laughs> you know some of better, Kim. Mm -hmm. When I got this job, I reckoned there'd be a few advantages to being a boss. I must admit, playing Cupid weren't the first one that sprang to my mind. <laughs> Mike, question for you. Yeah, you can buy me a corner. I'll have one with a double raspberry. How do you feel about June bribes? Oh, I think they're smashing. Especially if they're wearing those frilly little garters. <laughs> no, seriously. I've been thinking, maybe we should talk about setting a date. What, for the wedding? No, for taking parachute lessons. <laughs> it's just that you haven't mentioned it for a while. Well, I was waiting for you to do that. I mean, you're the one that's getting all the flack from home. Yeah, I know. Can't pretend it's been easy. But I think they're settling down to it. I think my dad is becoming reconciled to the inevitable now. Is he? You sure he's not being more amenable because he's got you back under his roof and he's hoping that they don't get me out of your system? No, why should he think that? He knows I'm not seeing anybody else and he knows I'm still wearing this. Yeah, but what's he going to say when you say that we made a date? Never mind about him. What about you? Do you really want to marry me, Michael Vernon Baldwin? Or if a girl actually pins you down to it, will you turn tail and run? God damn it, I've forgotten my running shoes. So it's still on then, is it? Why wait till June? Tomorrow's not soon enough for me, my darling. Right, I'll tell them then. What about tomorrow? Oh, June. Believe it or not, there's one or two things to do. I always thought white weddings were a lot of romantic tosh. Now it's coming to my own, I'm quite looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Let's hope we're not the only ones. Uh, give us a couple of large cornets, will you, mate? Yes, she's still in the back. Oh, thanks. Hello, love. Hello. I thought you might come in the Rovers. I'll oh. wait you dinner a bit. <laughs> I got some sandwiches from next door. Oh. I don't always go booze in at dinner time, you know. Mind you, she would if I let her. She always has a go at you, Mavis, doesn't she? Oh, she does. I'm used to it. I bet you could thump her sometimes, couldn't you? Hey, now you. I could do without you encouraging insurrection amongst my minions. Um, was it about last night you wanted to see me? Well, yes, I think you ought to talk about it. How was she this morning? Sulky. Well, I'll have to deal with that. Uh, there's something else come up, though. Um, I've had a bit of news this morning. Oh. Gazette in here. Yes, just come in. Well, it is. My firm have agreed to base me here in Manchester, so long as I can still serve as my old area. So, look, um, why don't you come round to the house tonight? After we've finished here, and I can sort it out with you. All right, love, we'll do. Yes, I'll see you later. Hold on one second. Now then, young sir. Box the drawing pins, please. Right. Till I know. Bye. Bye. So. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, right, kid. How's it going? Oh, rotten. Just looking through jobs in here. I mean, they're underqualified or overqualified. How can you be overqualified? You've done now. Ta, thanks for reminding me. Well, what I mean by that is that you've not been a college or anything, have you? Of course not, but a lot of them say school leavers are not exactly that either, am I? They want kids so they can pay kids' wages. Here, I've got an idea. Bet yeah. It's a job I need. Do not give me credit for having any finer feelings. All right, then. Convince me. Why is this young female person so cynical? Hey, eh? maybe she's just naturally suspicious. Or maybe she's heard about your reputation. Come on, sweetheart. We'll discuss this over a quiet cup of coffee. Mm. Oh, I'll uh, take one of those. 
32p, right? Thank you. And if she has heard about my reputation, she'll have heard I know how to treat a girl. <laughs> Come on, darling. So, it's June then. Yeah, if we can get a church and somewhere to have a reception. We'll have to get our skates on, though. Will you help me, Deirdre? What with? Well, the arrangements, choosing a dress and that. I mean, I want Tracy to be my bridesmaid. It's just that, uh, well, I know it's a bit of an awkward situation asking you, in view of, um... But you see, I haven't got anybody else. I could ask my gran and I know she'd be down like a shot, but she's a bit old-fashioned. I'd much rather it was you. You see, the thing is that in spite of everything, or maybe because of it, I feel closer to you than I do to anybody. Well, except Mike, that is. So will you help me? I'd be glad to, love. And it won't be too difficult for you. <laughs> the only difficulty being dealing with your dad. Does he talk about it to you? No, not recently. I think he's taking a let sleeping dogs lie sort of attitude. Oh, well, he knew it had to come to this. I mean, those were the conditions I came back on. Mm. I know. I think he was hoping that, given time, you'd change your mind. Yeah, well, I haven't. Oh, I can see that. So, what would you advise me to do? What shall I say to him? Just tell him what you've told me. That you still love Mike and that you've decided to get married in the summer. And if he blows his top? Well, then, maybe you finally got to make a choice. Which of them means most to you? Yeah, but they both mean everything to me. I know, love. Life's a bitch sometimes, isn't it? Oh, God, is that the time? I'm sorry, love. I'll have to dash. Right, Mr Devlin, yeah, I've got that. Number 16. Yeah. How does 9 o'clock tomorrow morning suit you? Well, it all happened. Fine. Thanks. I'll see you then. Bye-bye, then. No. That was Mr Devlin. Oh, yeah? Who's he, then? The bloke that rang this morning. I told you he'd ring back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always right, aren't you? Have you fixed this yet, or what? Uh, try it and see. You try it and see. I'm too young and lovely. What did he want? Well, it wasn't Chatsworth. Paving stones. Oh, no. A lot of them. He's building a new patio. What's wrong with paving stones? Nothing, sweetheart, if you're sat on them and in a sun lounge with a long, cool drink in your mitt. Plenty if you're the poor bird that's got ump the flaming things about. Never mind. Be good for your muscles. It's not the muscles I'm worried about, darling. Right, then. To your coffee. I'll have a coffee, please. Curly, the lady wants a coffee. You make it. She's your visitor. Correction, sunshine. She's nobody's visitor. She's our new employee. What? Yeah. She needs a job. We need a phone sitter. Put the two together and bingo, they're both suited. Hey, I'm good, though. You never said out about me working in here. Well, what's wrong with working here, mate? I mean, it's good conditions, nice sociable hours. Play your cards, right? You get the key to the executive loop. How much? Quid an hour. Get more than that charring. Well, go charring, then. Money in me hand, like. We don't want to start getting involved in no PAYE and stamps and that, do we, Curl? Now, just a minute, Terry, just a minute. Uh, as joint and equal partner in this business, I think I should have my say. So say. Since when did we decide that we could afford to take on staff? Since we started losing work by not getting messages. But we're not losing work. Paving stones, remember? None that we know of. How much have we lost that we don't know of, eh? Right, sweetheart, the kettle's boiling. Now, you make yourself at home. Now, anybody phones in, calls, wants us to do out, the answer is yes. As long as it's legal. So long as it's legal. You, uh, you just use your pretty little loaf, eh? Why were you two going? I'm gonna shift some geezer's old storage tank. Told you, dead glamorous world you're moving into. Oh, promise is a promise. Oh. There you go. Ah. Sorry, spider. Secretary's perks. See ya. Bye. Bye. You're late. I had to go somewhere. Well, your bag's there. It's all ready for you. Rita not here? No, she went home. She was feeling rotten, if you must know. She's not been good all day. What's been them sausages we had last night? It was nothing to do with sausages. She was upset about you. Oh, really? Yes, really. Look, I've tried to keep out of this, but I can't stand by and see you behaving the way you are to Mrs. Fairclough. That woman's been goodness itself to you. She took you in, she gave you a I home. I never asked her to. Oh, didn't you? 
Oh, I suppose you didn't run away from the home that they sent you to, leaving Mr. Worthington with no alternative but to find you a foster parent. I mean, Mrs. Fairclough didn't have to take you in, you know. She was a lot of extra work for her, let alone the aggravation. She's never said no. Oh, no, well, she wouldn't, but I'm saying it. Nothing mattered to her, none of that mattered, just so long as you were all right. She did it willingly, and this is the way you thank her. Look, I've got nothing against her. She's all right. I just wish she'd not got so pally with me dad, that's all. Oh, why not? Why shouldn't they be friendly if they get on together? What harm does it do you? I don't know. I just want it to be me and him, that's all. I've not had a dad all these years. I don't want nobody else, not even her. That's why I went. You went where? You're soaking wet, child. Where have you been? To the cemetery. I took my mum some flowers. I sat there hoping she could help me sort things out. She used to be good at understanding things, my mum. But I was just being stupid, weren't I? She's not there, is she? There's nobody I can rot and talk to. Nobody! Yeah, I can tell. Oh, you just. Uh, how long would he be? Uh, about a quarter of an hour. Only, uh, I was going to go out afterwards. Uh, Dad, I've got something to tell you. Deirdre already knows. Tracy, let's, uh, let you and me go in the kitchen, darling, see how the pie's doing. Not my fucking secrets. You're always trying to get rid of me. Don't be cheeky now. Come on, do as you're told. I didn't want to tell you at the office. Besides, we were too busy anyway. But I saw Mike at lunchtime, and we've decided on a June wedding. I see. Well, isn't there another date that once I'm thinking about first? What date? Your 21st, yours and Peter's. What about it? Well, I always wanted to give you both a big slap up do on your coming of age. Yeah, but that was 18. Uh, yeah, but you were in Glasgow then, and uh, anyway, it's a newfangled idea to an old traditionalist like me. 21's a big one. Hey. What do you say? Well, why don't we combine the two? I and mean, I could get married on my 21st birthday. That'd make it really something special. And I'm sure Peter wouldn't mind. Love, it's your birthday next month. There's hardly time to organise a party and a wedding. Let's take one thing at a time, eh? What party? What wedding? Look, I said upstairs, miss, and clean up. It's all right, we've sorted it out now. What party? Can I come? Well, Dad's arranged a special 21st birthday party for me. But I wouldn't dream of going without having my special sister there. Come on, let's go and get washed. Won't be five minutes. said anything to me about it. Big occasion. Always plan to celebrate the twins' 21st. What's the father for? Have you eaten? Oh, I'll have something later on, love. Where's Jenny? At your pals. Well, I thought it best. Well, sorry about last night. It wasn't your fault. No, no, I should have seen that coming. I shouldn't have let you in for all that. It's not me I'm worried for. What are you going to do about Jenny? Well, I've already done something in that direction. Oh, you've already spoken to her then? What about me moving there? No, I'm going to tell her tonight. No, not that. About her behaviour. Well, then you'll have to have a word with her. I've tried, but well, you're a father. Yes, I will do, love, but not now. She's, uh, she's been through a hard time lately, you know. Don't you think I don't know that? But you'll have to draw the line somewhere, though. I mean, people aren't going to make allowances for her for the rest of her life, you know. I suppose she did go a bit over the top last night. Bit yeah. over the top? She was damn rude. And I hope you're going to tell her that, for her sake, as well as ours. I don't think that would be a good idea, Rita. You don't? You think she can just get away with murder whenever she feels no, like of it? Of course I don't, but it was seeing you and me together that sparked all that off. So what I've decided is that for the time being, I've got to put her first. Meaning what? Meaning that it's about time we got out from under your feet. There's something else I've got to tell you, too. I found us a flat. Ah, yeah. You don't let the grass grow, do you? I've got a lot of time to make up, though. So, uh, when is all this going to happen, then? As soon as possible. What's the matter? I thought you'd be pleased. You always said you didn't want this to be a permanent arrangement. Yes, yes, I know I did. Uh, well, perhaps it was selfish of me. See, I saw myself as a sort of bridge, helping Jenny cross from her old life to her new. Giving her a sense of security, a sense of belonging for a while. As it stands, all I've done is come between you both. No. Oh, yes, I have. You can't wait to rush her away, and she can't wait to go. 
Of course you should be together. That's only right. Of course you should. But I didn't think when the time came it had happened like this. Sarah? Certainly, Mrs. Holt. No problem. Yeah, Thursday morning, nine o'clock sharp. Yeah. Yes, I've got your address. It's um 23 Elm Street. Yeah. All right then. Thanks. Bye. What are you doing? Working. What's it look like? She fancy a coffee? Well, I'd best hang on while lads get back. And uh, when did all this happen? Well, I bumped into Terry after I left you. I needed somebody here. Got nothing else to do till something better turns up, so. Oh, sure. It was a genuine Windsor chair. It's only fit for flaming firewood, mate. We can get it for a tenner. I didn't give ten pence for it. And flog it for fifty. Oh, what is the point? You never listen to anything I say, do you? I don't know why I bother. You know something? You sound more like a wife every day. Oh. Hiya, right, mate. Hiya. Right. How's it going, sweetheart? Not been too lonely without me, I hope. No, I find things to do. I've uh, tidied out your cupboards. Oh, and Mrs. Holt come in, wants you to move her fireplace Thursday morning. I've written it all down on here. And, um, oh, a man come in, asking if he could shift some dead trees. I've told him you'd let him know. His number's here and all. Good girl. You see? She's earning a keep already. Mm. But we're paying her overtime. Hey, It's gone six. Oh, why, well, yeah. You trot along then, darling. Oh, right. See you in the morning. Be a change to come in here and have something worth looking at other than Curly's ugly mug. Right, I'll, uh... See you then. Yeah, and um, we'll settle up at the end of the week. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Smashing. I'd rather let it mount up anyway. Mm -hmm. Come on, Kev. You can see me on. You're a nutter. What's up with you? She's got us work already. A debatable point. We probably would have got it anyway. But what about him? Kevin. I mean, he's not deliriously happy about the arrangement either. Well, that is tough, isn't it? Because she's a free agent and she's entitled to earn a crust where she can. All right? You should have had some at Cooped. Like you, you mean? I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you. You need a good breakfast inside you, especially mornings like this. Look, I'm not hungry, OK? Suit yourself. Do you think my dad will get the flat? That's what you want, is it? Yeah, of course it is. You heard what he said. As soon as he gets fixed up, I can move in with him. That keen to go, are we? Yeah, of course I am. Well, it's what we've all been working for, ain't it? Oh, look at the time. I'll have made a note search party. Do us a favour, eh? Remind Mavis I'm going straight to Thought Savers. Yeah, all right then. See ya. See you, Jenny. Susan's like getting up, isn't she? Mm, she is this morning. She'll be late for work. Oh, she's not that late. I won't be late when I'm working. Oh, you what? Trouble I have getting you up for school in the morning. School's different, isn't it? Well, if you're that keen on work, you can give me a hand with this lot. I haven't finished my comic. You've all day to finish your comic now you've broke up. All right. Right. Oh, is she not surfaced yet? She's up. I've heard her knocking about. Oh. Morning. 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 It would be anything you'd hibernated. Oh, I know. I got him later than I expected. I didn't wait, you did I? No, no, you didn't. Has this tea been brewed for hours? Uh, don't know. You'd better ask Deirdre. Uh, Susan? Uh, ask Deirdre what? Is this tea stewed? Made it not five minutes since. Have you uh, told her yet? I haven't had a chance yet, have I? Told me what? About your 21st. What about it? I managed to get the bell stamp. What, the Bellstaff Hotel? That's right. When our can makes his mind up to do so, but he certainly does it in style. Yeah, but why? Why go to all that trouble? Because I want to. I just feel I've got something to make up to you, to you and Peter. Oh, has Peter definitely got leave then? Well, we're still waiting to hear, definitely. We didn't want to build your hopes up till we knew. But it seems more than likely, providing the Royal Navy don't change his mind. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, you better let me have Tim's phone number. Tim? Yeah, from Newcastle. Oh, you're inviting him? Yeah, and anyone else you can think of. I want to make sure that you have a party that you're not going to forget in a hurry. I mean, you're only 21 once, aren't you? Morning. Hello, Hello. Hello Betty. Uh, have you put mine away? Shall I help myself? I haven't had time to turn around yet. I'll take one for Gloria. No, I'm sick to the teeth of her pinching mine. Oh, I wouldn't have thought she had any time for reading, not from what I've been hearing. Is that right? Yeah. Hello, love. Hello, Betty. Betty was just about to tell us all about <laughs> Gloria's new boyfriend. Betty was about to tell you no such thing. If you want to know about that kind of thing, you better ask Gloria. Oh, Hello, Betty. 
it's all. I was just showing an interest. Don't suppose you know anything about him? No, I don't. And I don't want to either. I've had quite enough of poking my nose into other people's lives, thanks very much. Enough to last me a lifetime. Oh, one of those mornings, eh? Are there any other oh, kind? Not Jenny again. Jenny, Alan, you name them. Alan? I thought he was on your side. So did I, till last night. Well, didn't he come to see Jenny then? I mean, I thought he was going to come round and sort her out about being so cheeky lately. So did I, till he came. More or less blame me for what happened, for coming the heavy with her. More or less took her side. He's a father, I suppose. Oh, and he made that quite clear and all. Sorry. Well, it seems he's going to be staying over here for quite a while now, so he's got himself a flat. Well, what difference does that make? Well, he wants Jenny to move in with him, and she can't wait to go. I'm sorry I woke you up then. Uh, Betty said you might be coming round to have a look, yeah. but uh, I can't honestly see it being your cup of tea, you know. The furniture's out of the ark, and, well, one of the bedrooms, you'd have more room in a phone box. Yeah, no, but it's going to have to do. What are you thinking of taking it, then? I'm not thinking, love. I am doing. Just got a few things to work out with the landlord, and that's it. So, looks like we might be seeing a bit more of each other, then. Yeah. Landlord's on the top floor, isn't he? That's right, yeah. Okay, I'll see you then. Ta-da. Yeah, I'll see you. Oh, come on, our Terry. What do you think, eh? Is this hey. lot for the tip or what, eh? Yeah, we might as well take the lot, though. We're lucky to make our petrol money on this. You haven't been listening to one flaming word I've been saying, have you? We haven't been listening. You're the one with the head full of sawdust. The answer's no, same as it was five minutes ago. Tee up! Who's oh, a little geez. darling? Oh, that's very nice of you, Tarvin. Oh, for the staff. I'm a customer, aren't I? It's like it, doesn't it? Well, shall I make another cup? Oh, you little angel. Uh, just a little bit of milk and I'll drop the sugar. Oh, Don't yeah. bother, he was just going. I don't know how you can work with a skimper like, like him that won't even do his old fella a favour. What favour? He wants to borrow the van for an hour. Take his pigeons for some exercise. <laughs> Won't it do him more good to fly around or something? I need the van to take them on the moors. Then I'll let them go and they come back on their own. What? Thumb a lift, you mean? <laughs> oh, come on, lads. I mean, while you're messing about with that, I can be back in an hour, can't I? No. Well, tell very much for now. I hope you can see what kind of outfit you've got in yourself pitched up with. Well, it's all experience, isn't it? We all know what kind of experience you'll get off him, don't we? <laughs> oh, I thought he'd only took me on to answer the phone. You don't know the half of it, darling. Flaming kids, I'll see you. Not too soon, I hope. <laughs> you know, you want to watch what you say. You what? Well, you know, about you and her in front of your dad. Why are you jealous, are you? Listen, I know you're only skylarking, but some folk might not find it funny. Like Kevin, for instance. Kevin? Yeah, Kevin. I mean, he's not exactly over the moon about her working here, well, is he? Well, it's tough, innit? Because she is working here and she's enjoying it. Right, kid? Right, Terry. And I reckon she's more than capable of looking after herself. Hey, kid. Just try me. <laughs> That's the dog. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> hey, if he's bothering you, tell us the wink. Don't mind him. He always has been very protective as my granddad. Get that phone when you don't get it. So, we're back tonight. You'll have to wait and see, won't you? Well, what am I supposed to wear if I don't know where we're going? Oh, good point. <clears throat> I'll go on then. We're going out for a meal, but more than that, I'm not saying. Except it's a bit special. Right. Nose bag it is, then. Well, Dave, you sound all right. Yeah. Eight o'clock, then. Right. I'll pick you up. Uh, yeah, it might uh, be best if you don't come to the flat, actually. I'll, uh, I'll see you at the end of the street, OK? What's wrong with the flat? <laughs> well, parking, really. That's the trouble with those places, you know, no garages. By seven o'clock, you can't move for park cars. Don't go away. Not so much. Just wonder whether Curly was in. Not seeing him, no. Teddy? Don't talk to me about our Terry. I mean, how often do I ask him for a favour? Oh, no, you're not bragging me in your family arguments. I only wondered whether he'd been in. Well, would you bust have got to get in here if you had a perky little dolly bird pandering to your every need, eh? Sally. Youth opportunities, they call it. Well, yeah, never had opportunities like that when I was a youth, I'm telling you. So you're trying to get me going? Look, I am just telling you that if I had a dolly bird like her in tow, I would not be in here supping ale while she was shacked up in that yard with that lad of mine, but you can please yourself, son. Do you reckon he's buried the hatchet? Who? Ken Marlow. 
<laughs> yeah, I do. I can see the crack in Mike's skull from here. Seems to me he's chucked the towel in. Why else would they be in here knowing that you could come in here any minute? Well, I don't know, Betty. But if you mm. think Ken Barlow's chucked the towel in, it's not the Ken Barlow I know. Uh, the Bell Staff Hotel? Yeah, I told us this morning. Across an arm and a leg just to go through the door there. So I hear. Well, he said he wanted Peter and I to have a 21st birthday party we'd never forget. Well, your brother's coming up, isn't he? Well, it's not definite, but my dad seems fairly hopeful. Don't look so worried. You're not paying for it. Don't even suppose I'll be going. Of course you will. I'm your fiance, aren't you? Well, who's going to invite me then? Ken? He is paying for it, isn't he? Well, he may be paying for it, but it's still my party. Well, mine and Peter's, that is. Of course you'll be going. Anyway, if you don't go, neither do I. Here you are. Thanks, Phil. You need to make one special, you know. Just get it down, yeah. Are you sure you don't want anything to eat? Oh, thanks. I've had a sandwich. Well, take the weight off your feet if you stop him. Well, go on. Tell us all about it. Well, there's not much to tell, really. Living room, two bedrooms, kitchen and bathroom. And the furniture's not nothing to write home about, either. Well, you can bring some of your stuff over from Leeds. No, I've got to leave it in stores till I get something a bit more permanent. That'd be right to know. Oh. So when can you move in? As soon as I like. Oh, that's great. Hello. Hello. I didn't expect to see you here. Well, I just dropped in to catch Jenny and tell her about the flat. He's know. got it. You know that one you went to look at? Oh, I see. Well, if that's what you want. Well, I wouldn't like to think I was going to spend the rest of my life there, but uh, it'll do for now. <laughs> so, uh, when are you thinking of moving in? Well, I might as well move in tonight. Hardly anything to take, anyway. I want to go with you. Well, he will do as soon as I get I settled. I mean, tonight. Tonight? Oh, on a minute, love you. I've made my mind up, Dad. I want to go with you tonight. <laughs> You know. Why are you expecting? Just got the impression from Jack Duckworth there's a bit more play than work going on around here. Well, he were right, weren't he? Not exactly pulled out, am I? I don't think that's exactly what he meant. Oh, what did he mean? He just gave me the impression, said he might be coming it a bit. What with me? I don't mean with Curly, do I? Oh. And you were expecting me and him? Well, I've told you, it's just Jack. But it wasn't now, was it? Little Kevin's been going at green eye, hasn't he? Look, where birds are concerned, I won't trust that Teddy Duck up as far as I can throw him. But you trust me, though, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. So you should have known. You know how much I feel about you. Or do I have to prove it to you? Supposing someone comes in? Like who? Like anybody. Better? And what about Pinky and Perky? Got to stop put to do a house clearance. They won't be back for ages. And if you say you have to rush off to work, I'm gonna throttle you. Oh, is it going soon? She's only thinking of you, you know. Is she? Well, you did say you were finding her a bit of a handful. Yes, I know, but I didn't mean I had enough of her. I just thought if you came over and had a word with her, and if we both showed how we disapproved how she was carrying on, the last thing I expected was for you to take her side. Well, I had no choice, did I? Not when you put me on the spot. Of course you had. You could have backed me up. That would have just made things worse. All these weeks I've spent trying to get her to accept me back into her life. Now, what do you think would have happened to all that if I'd come down on her like a ton of bricks and all? I'm sorry if you don't see it this way, Rita, but if I'm ever going to have any kind of lasting relationship with my daughter, I've got to spend more time with her and build on what I've already set up. I'd have thought you'd have understood that. I do now, don't I? 
Have I given her such a bad time she can't wait to be rid of me? Have I? No, of course not. If you hadn't been around to pick up the pieces when her mother died, God knows what would have happened to her. She'll never be able to repay you for what you've done. And neither will I. Leave you. Tomorrow then. And don't make me have to fetch you back in Terry's van wearing your nighty. No chance. Oh, I thought you were looking forward to this night out. I'll see you. See you, chicken. To right, Lord. Lucky crow. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing myself. Nice young fella. Well mannered, knows how to treat a girl. She's really landed on her feet there, hasn't she? He's the lucky crow, not her. Oh, I reckon they both are chuck. And you should be feeling well chuffed with yourself. Hey. Yeah. If it hadn't been for you and the odd rows, they might never have met. 82, 85, 90 a pound. Oh, tell me. <laughs> I say, what? Gave you a five pound now. Oh, Betty, you did. I'm sorry, love. Oh, I'm miles away. No, there we are, love. Not wrong, is there? Uh, no, not really. Uh, just, well, Jenny's going tonight. She's going to live with her dad. Oh, I am pleased. Is that something I shouldn't? Well, it's just that uh, Rita's come a, a bit attached to her. Well, I can imagine. I mean, when you think what you've done with her. I mean, the state she was in when you first took her under your wing. I mean, she hardly even knew her own dad. I think you've worked wonders with her, love. I really do. Wish her all the best for me, won't I you? I will. Ta da, girls. Bye bye. 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 She's right, you know. You have done wonders with her. So everybody keeps telling me. Just might find it easier to swallow if Jenny wasn't so keen to take off. Well, if Mr. Worthington says it's all right. Yes, he does. It's, still doesn't make it any easier, does it? Still doesn't alter the fact she can't wait to go. Yeah, but if she wants to live with her father... Or does she just want to get away from me? I'm the one that's trying to clip her wings, remember? I'm the one that's trying to make her toe the line, not her dad. I can't help thinking, once she gets in that flat, heaven knows what she'll get away with. You don't know that. Oh, yes, I do. And so does she. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16... Are you planning on stopping there all night? Only some of us are starving here. Uh, just two minutes, then. Blimey! How many are you thinking of asking for pity's sake? Yeah, well, it's not a question of numbers. It's a question of making sure we've got everybody down who matters. I hope there's a disco. Debbie Burns had a disco. It was great. Yeah, I'm sure they'll have a disco, love. Can I have a disco at my party? We'll see. Now, listen, if you're going to get changed before you have your tea, you better get a move on, young lady. I'm going. Are you asking BT? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, just as long as she don't blame me. Hi. Hi, here's Susan. Now I will have to have that table, love. Hello, love. And before you start getting on at me, it's your dad's fault there's no tea on the table. Oh, I don't think she'll mind a bit. Not when she knows what I've been doing. Oh? I've been trying to work out a guest list for your 21st, and your brother is coming. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we got word definitely this afternoon. It's, uh, some hope. Depends, doesn't it? On what? Well, all this time you've been going on about who you're inviting to my party. You never once mentioned Mike. Not once. And if there's one person I want to be there, it's him. Well, is he coming or isn't he? Of course he's coming. What, you, you mean you don't mind? If you want him there, he'll be there. I promise you. Hey, Armando. <laughs> what about roller skating? What about it? Well, it's an idea, isn't it? I mean, if we don't think of somewhere, everywhere's going to be shut. Oh, I've told you, I'll leave it to you. Right then, studio one it is. Unless. Unless what? Unless. You'd rather go back to the yard. Got keys to office. Sally said it. I'm surprised at you. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Wanting to go back to that drafty old yard. And I've got a nice warm van parked outside. Come on, drink up. <laughs> hey, up. All right, Kaylee, mate. Everything all right at the yard then, sir? Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got your note. No messages. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sorry to leave you there on your own for so long. Just that the job took longer than we reckoned. I know it can't be much fun stuck there on your own. I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't you. Good night. See you, Kelly, mate. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Hello, Mike. 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 Hello,
Oh, well, what's the problem? No problem. I just came to tell you that you're invited to my 21st. <laughs> what do you have to use on him? Thumb screws? When I brought the subject up, he just seemed to assume you were coming anyway. Oh, well, I'm very pleased. The last thing I wanted was a lot of aggro over this. I think he may be coming round, mate. I hope you're right. Anyway, now you're here, you can have a drink. Why not? Bet you love when you've got a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah. Half an hour. Okay. Is it alright, Doug? Yes, thank you. Because it's still cold out. Freezing. <laughs> what are you doing here? Come to work, haven't I? Work? Just do us a favour, Beth. If David comes in, tell him out to work. Are you standing him up? Just tell him that, please. I'll be with you in a sec. Hey. Yeah. What's going on? Search me. Oh, beautiful. But you shouldn't have bothered. It was Jenny's idea. She paid for them out of her own money. She's not a bad kid, really, you know. No. But she'll need a firm hand. You know that. Yes, I know. Dad! Come in. Come and give us out with this, will you? Hang on. Right, what have we got in there? The bath? Is that it, then? Yeah, the rest of it's just in the car. Right. If you've forgotten anything, you know where I am. Well, I shouldn't strip her bed yet if I were you. She might come straight back when she sees the state of that flat. I won't. So that's it then. Looks like it. Right then. Thanks very much, Rita. For everything. I don't know how to got through without you. I don't think I would have done. Very welcome, Jenny. You know that. Well, tar any road. Right then. Well, I'll take that. No, it's all right. Good morning. Well, what can I say? Except, um, thanks again. I just hope it all works out for you. You got the address? Yes. Right, well, uh, that's it then. Yes. Dad! Do you know, I've got the feeling that my life is never going to be the same again. I'll see you, Rita. See you. Three. Well, make your minds up. Is it two or three? Three, two. Look, you can't leave your old fella out. Oh, can't I? Well, you don't seem to find it too hard to leave us out, do you? Yeah, well, it's your shout, innit? Oh, I see. So you're coming in with me and Curly now, are you? Well, yeah. Well, in that case, bet make it three. Right! You're a star, I would tell you. What are you, hey? And he'll pay, bet. Me? Yeah, that's right. Me and Curly have already got around it, haven't we? Cheers, father. <laughs> One pound ninety-two pence, please, Jacko, and I don't want no IOUs. Yeah, oh, very much. Ah. Hey, where's Gloria? Well, I've sent her to make a cup of tea, Betty. The poor kid will like a jelly. Ah, oh, has she said anything else? Not to me, she hasn't. It seems a rum do for me, does it? I mean, it seems such a decent bloke. We're getting on like house on fire dinner time. If it is him that's playing silly beggars. <laughs> hey? Takes two to tango, Betty. Just what you're trying to say, Curly. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm telling you, she's Kev's bird. And if you keep chatting her up the way you are, well, it'll only end in bother. Well, what am I supposed to do? Ignore her. You know what I mean. Yeah, I do. And for your information, it's her that's chucking herself at me. All right, Sally can be a bit forward, a bit over-friendly. But you've got to admit, Terry, I mean, you're not exactly helping matters. Curly, mate, I don't see it the way you do. She doesn't see it that way either. I mean, it's just a bit of harmless fun, all right? Yeah, but is that the way Kevin's going to see it? Well, that's his problem, isn't it? <laughs> Leave him to me, Betty. Oh, right. Can I help you, Chuck? I don't suppose you've seen Gloria, have you? As a matter of fact, I have. You have? She's in the back. Uh, Betty? Yeah. I'm sorry, but I had to call her in, Chuck. She could have phoned. Uh, now, hang on. Don't you think you'd better hear what she's got to say for herself? Sorry. <laughs> David. What's going on? I waited at the end of your street for over half an hour. I'm sorry, David. I, I tried to phone you. I would have found out you weren't in. You've been to the flat? Of course I have. When you didn't turn up, I didn't know where you'd got to. Yeah, well, uh, like I say, I'm sorry, but... Uh, well, you can see how I'm fixed. It's still not too late, you know. Sorry? Well, it seems quiet enough in here now. Um, yeah. But you see, uh... Well, Betty wants to get away early. That's why I had to come in. Oh, I see. Perhaps tomorrow night, then. I'm sorry, David. Well, if you'd sooner leave it till next week... Look, I'm really sorry if I gave you the wrong idea. Led you on, if you like. But, well, I really think it'd be better if we don't see each other anymore. But why? 
But we seem to be getting on so well Look, together. I don't want to talk about it. I just want you to go, all right. <laughs> it's finished. There's not a lot more to be said then, is there? <laughs> Bye, Gloria. So you never get waited on. And what's biting you this lovely bank holiday morning? Oh, what do you think? I mean, why I ever took up bar work, I shall never know. Who else works on a bank holiday? Hey, up, I'm the one should be moaning. I mean, I pay you double time, but I can't charge double, can I? You can close those doors and give the churches a chance. Hello, I have the bishop to tea again, have you? I hope Gloria turns up, and it's not just muggins here. Unless she's run off with Jack. Jack? Ah, Jack, do you mean? Oh, well. Oh, come on now, I know you're kidding. If she's going to run off with anybody, she'd have thought David Atherton had been favourite. Stood him up, love. I know she stood him up. She could have changed her mind, couldn't she? After all, you said she was acting very strange. Absolutely. All arts and flowers, one minute. Uh, My day. Mm. The insurance game's answer to Clint Eastwood. Next minute, she's given the air. Hmm. I reckon there's a bit of you in her. Well, I have been known to do a few about turns in my time, Betty. But there's usually been some at else lined up, haven't there? Mm. Gloria doesn't turn up. And Jack's got the day off. Exactly, my dear Watson. Elementary, you might say. Oh, she wouldn't run off with Jack, would she? Lay money on it, would you? No, I wouldn't. Her love lad's none of my business. She can run off with Prince Andrew in that helicopter for all I care. But if I've got to do her work as well as mine, <laughs> it's a poor do. Now then, shirty Gertie, keep your hair on. Her time's half past ten. If she's not turned in by quarter two, we'll start panicking. Right. No milk? Are you sure? Not a drop. And half the shots will be so lonely. Oh, love, I must have a cup of tea. I tell you what, nip across the landing and ask Gloria if she's got any to spare, will you? Who's Gloria? Gloria, her from the Rovers. You know, the nice-looking one. Don't you think that's a bit cheeky? I mean, she's not bothered with us since we moved in. Well, give her a chance. We've only been here a few days. I hardly know her. Well, now's your opportunity. Go on. It's cadging, isn't it, though? I mean, I ain't cadging. It really annoys me. I'd rather watch her flipping dairy or failing that find a cow. All right, I'll do it myself. You don't mind me cadging, do you? I know I must sound a bit screwy, but it's so great being here. I understand, love. Anyway, one look at you and she'll be in her fridge like a shot. Well, I didn't, you mean? No me for the milk. Cos you can handle women, can't you? What gave you that idea? Hey, if you're not back in ten minutes, I'm going to send a search party. Oh, and ask her about deliveries. Do you want to take over, Hey, Come on. Yeah? Hello, love. It's uh, Alan Bradley from across the hall. Oh, hello. Oh, sorry to trouble you. Um, it's just that we ran out of milk and I wondered if you got a drop to spare. Oh, yeah, I think I can manage that. Just a sec, I'll see what I've got. Thanks. I should have invited you in. You must be slipping, Dad. I'll brain you. Get back in there. Uh, well, half a bottle do. It's oh. yesterday's, but it's been in the fridge. Oh, that's great, yeah. We're not leaving you short, are we? Oh, no, no. I've got all today's. Uh, listen, if you want me to uh, leave a note out, he'll deliver some tomorrow, you know. Oh, would you? Yeah, yeah. just time to call. Yeah. Um, working today, eh? Well, unless I get a better offer between here and the Rovers. See you. Yeah, till then. Half a bottle, eh? All I'd have got were a cup full. Just go and put the kettle on, madam. Look, love, before I traipse upstairs with all this... Don't you be told it's me and Susan's room. No, I'm sure you said it was me and Tracy's room. Yes, I did say that. Yeah, well, that's what I thought you said, but I'm getting all this flack. Anyway, I thought Sailor said I'm a... <laughs> Peter's not exactly an old salt, you know. I mean, he's not going to come in dancing a hornpipe with a parrot on his shoulder. I know that. I mean, he does rain down, doesn't he? Oh, well, we've been in the night box this morning, then. Listen, love, while we're busy, why don't you go and see Auntie Emily? She might take you in the park. You could feed the ducks. I'm not into ducks. Oh. Tell me something. Why have I just taken all Susan's bedding upstairs? Well, don't ask us. You were supposed to bring it in here for washing. Oh. Trace, will you come and show me which drawers I can use? I hope you don't still snore. Look, love, just chuck those sheets back down, will you? Yeah, OK. <laughs> Right, well, that's the bedding organised. How things on the mess deck? Oh, all right. If I need help, you'll hear me. I'll shout man overboard. <laughs> As Susan seems bright enough. No more qualms about the party. No, on the contrary, I think she's looking forward to it. 
invited to include a ball in. Well, it was inevitable she'd want him invited. I'm surprised you didn't tumble to that when you dreamed all this up. Oh, maybe I'm just a bit thick. Oh, come on, Ken. A 21st, the bell staff, guest list as long as your arm. I mean, there's no way she'd have a... Well, her intended left out. You must have realised that. Yeah, I suppose I did, deep down. Right, better go see if the girls are coping. It's a funny do, this, isn't it? All three of us getting invites, plus partners. Wonder what it's all in aid of. Maybe he wants that such a class. Yeah, we know Ken Milo. I mean, we say hello, but that's about it. Yeah, I wonder if Mike Baldwin's gonna be there. Hey, that is a good question, because if he's not, it might be your big chance in a pin with Simpson and Super. <laughs> well, I'm not going. I mean, what's the point if it's all partners? I mean, where's the spare coming from? Listen, get yourself fixed up. Don't be a burke all your life. I'm in a free rave up at the Bellstaff Hotel. I'll be doing interviews, me. <laughs> Oh, what? I think it's a big foster game on at the wreck. We could get a side up. Hey, I'll play in goals. I'm a great goal in me. Listen, Peter Shulton, we've got a bit of a problem here. Oh, is that right? We'll just tell Mum at every little thing. Curly needs a date. We've all been invited to this class 21st, but it's partners only. Kev's taking Michelle, aren't you, Kev? Yeah. Oh, well, in that case, I'm open to offer. Take the notice of it. He's just stirred in it. You're coming with me. No, we just thought you might have a friend who was desperate. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Why do I sit here and listen to this? Because we are going to fix you up with a gorgeous bird, mate. Gorgeous birds are not desperate, Terry. They don't go on blind dates, which, given the time factor, is all I can offer. Hang on, hang on. Who says they don't? It's one of the immutable laws of Western courtship. Well, Kev met Michelle on a blind date, didn't you, Kev? Well, I won't call her gorgeous. OK, big mouth. Put the wooden spoon away. Oh. All I'm saying is, all I'm trying to prove is that you might get a gorgeous bird on a blind date. I mean, they get a kick seeing the guy react, don't they? He's been expecting an hat rack, and there turns up this great chick. Am I right, Sally? I mean, I bet you've done it, haven't you? Oh, yeah, regular. There you are, I've done it myself. Done what? Well, not on blind dates. Have you never seen him in his lorex and his high heels? <laughs> <laughs> I ring up blind, don't I? Put on this weed's voice, and then when they see me... Oh, the weather feel ramble. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hang about. Come to think of it, I do have a mate who's a bit screwy like that. Louis Ferrest. She's always been a bit offbeat. Sees normal dates as a real turn-off. She wants that sense of danger. Why don't you give her a belt? Will she be in? Yeah, she can't go out. She gets pestered that much with lamb. Is that how they used to play for your team for the YW? Yeah. Hey, you could have struck gold there, Kelly lad. She'll see a breast of ball down. Oh, hey. <laughs> now, I know a number, just let me think. It's, um, Weatherfield 4972. <gasps> well, Dynamite, you're ringing or what? Or do I have to carry you everywhere? Yeah, yeah, I ring. Make yourself sound weird. You know, like a, a strangler or something. I'll just be myself. Well, that could be even better, mate. Oh, <laughs> blow this, it's balmy. Oh, look, are you British or what? What is it? 4972. Yeah. Them first two are the chest measurements or what? <laughs> Hello, you don't know me, but I am tall, dark and sinister looking. Hello. Uh, oh, do we have a cross line? Uh, uh, this is the uh, Fairhurst residence, I take it. Oh, oh good, good. Uh, well, the thing is, um, well, not to beat about the bush, so to speak, uh, I've been invited to this fabulous 21st birthday party. Um, I was given your number by a mutual acquaintance who tells me you might be at a loose end tomorrow evening. What, are you going to bingo? <laughs> What, at your age? That's tragic. I mean, are you hooked? Have you been at it since birth? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Fairhurst. Yes, it, it probably is your daughter I'm trying to contact. Oh. Yes, yes, of course I'll hang on. <laughs> well, I dare say it seems very nice on first acquaintance, this Alan Bradley, but I mean, he stood on no ceremony with Rita. Just walked in, after all she'd done for that child. Oh, I don't think it was quite as sudden as that, was it, Mavis? And I understand social services were happy enough. Yes, well, it certainly hurt Rita's feet. I'm she'll miss him more than she'll miss Kid. If you don't mind me saying so, Pat, that's a very insensitive remark and not worthy of you. Part of the course, I'd say. Maybe, but so better a point. I must admit, it's quite fanciable. The plot figures, does it? Any clues, then? I beg your pardon? From the girl with the mysterious love eyes. Look, you were way out back in Jack Duck. But still, I mean, she has got this Alan fellow with his newfound daughter just living across the hall from her. So I believe. Mm. I mean, it's open season on him, then. What do you reckon? Well, I mean, he is a fitter, isn't he? We do need a little bit of air conditioning. I mean, that cellar smells like a brewery. Now, I know Emily's been invited to this big do tomorrow, but what about you, Mavis? Have you managed to wangle yourself an invite? What? Not a question of wangling, Ken and me. I've always had a sort of rapport. Oh, does Deirdre know? 
Can I uh, top you ladies up? Uh, no, thanks. Give us We've a scotch. just got these. Will you excuse us? Can we find a tape? Yes. Top us up. What sort of expression is that? <clears throat> Not in a garage. Ah, here he is, Mr. Popularity. Got a good book, have you, for the wee small hours? Tomorrow night? while the Barlows and guests dance the little clogs off. I could recommend several good reads, Confessions of a Sugar Daddy, for starters. Nice trade, darling, but you're way off. Never been a reader. Crochet him all your lines, <clears throat> when in need of consolation. Well, that depends on the company. No, I'm being cruel, Auntie. Now, listen, wait for it. I have been invited. I don't believe it. Truth is stranger than fiction, you ask Mrs. Thatcher. But you're never going, Mike. I mean, even you wouldn't have the nerve. Wild horses wouldn't keep me away. I mean, the gesture's there, isn't it? I mean, you know, the offering. Bosom of the family and all that. You know what goes with bosoms, don't you? Do tell me. Vipers. Oh, I must admit, Curly's got hidden depths. Very deep and very well hidden. Yeah, ten out of ten for him on the blower there. Yeah, it's a pity it were all wasted in her, ma'am. No, he did all right when he finally got talking at Lois, didn't he? Now, listen now, we're all leg pulling apart. It's Lois Bird. Is she gorgeous or what? She's a fun girl. Okay, she has a nervous rash and she's put a bit of weight on since our footy team split up, but... <sighs> she used to play your footy team. I told her. Sent her back. It was a great sliding tackle. This is Jessica Midgley. I kidnapped her this morning. I'm demanding a clear million. Oh, take no notice. No, we don't. Nice to meet you, Jessica. Nice to meet you. Well, if you've come all the way from Plymouth, you must be famished. Deirdre's got a sped on. Let's go inside and get right. all your news. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Great. in a bank and it only took about three months. Yes, but how firm is it? I mean, there is a little matter of sleeping arrangement, well, you know. Well, she can have Susan's room and Peter will have to make do with the sofa. Right, here we are. Grog uh, ration. Uh, OK, Dad. last God of the naval no. jokes, I promise. <laughs> Peter the killer can his hand a stone frigate. Blimey, it sounds like a fate worse than death. <laughs> now, that means you're a land-based leading seaman. Am I right? Ten out of ten. So, you two see quite a lot of each other, I suppose. Mm. Well, yes, we have these last weeks. I think to celebrate before I start making speeches. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm trying to film screws next week. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you do know that Susan's engaged. I mean, she must have told you. Engaged? I don't believe it. Has he got a white stick? Oh, brothers, don't worry, I suffer from them. Yeah, they should be stamped out. Yeah, all right, I'll be serious. Let me guess, eh? Don't tell me you've fallen for some fast-talking Geordie in market research. <sighs> Not exactly. Anyway, the toast is family and friends. Family, family and friends. friends. And uh, shouldn't it be Susan and Peter? No, 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 that's tomorrow. I'm spending all this money so I can get up and make a big speech tomorrow. Oh, crumbs, I forgot the it's okay. Oh, look, could you pass the other bottle of wine while you're out there, oh, please? Sorry, no, it should be a really good do, as long as... Uh, you sure this is me, Dad? I mean, you haven't locked the real one away and hired a double. <laughs> Why would you make you say that? Oh, he's so full of beans. Has he actually come to terms, do you think? I mean, when he mentioned, you know, I could... I don't know, love. Let's just keep our fingers crossed, eh? What? Hey, up, Lois. Sally speaking. I've got a date, is that right? You can't make it. Hey, listen, he's got it all fixed. Well, blow your call. This is a chance not to be missed. A date of a lifetime. A top rave up. And this guy, Curly, well, if Simon Le Bon ever needed a stand in. Barney, he's got a brilliant mind. Plus, he's loaded. I'm ringing from his office right now. Well, I'm in his office because I work for him. Yeah, I know it's a bank holiday, but I get the use of the phone, don't I? So I can gab to my mates on the free. Gave him a bell when I line up these cracking fellas. Well, line your own fellas up then. Sit at home nursing your sniffles. And you never could head a ball. Oh, hello, Sally. I didn't know you were on duty. I'm not. I just left my handbag here this morning. Oh, Kev not with you? Yeah, but he saw a mouse and he popped down a hole with some cheese. Oh, yeah, which hole? Oh, no, listen, forget Kevin. 
I've just been talking to Lois. Ah, Lois. Yeah, she said she'd ring for a full description. Now, I hope you did me proud. Steady eyes, firm chin, finely drawn. Well, steal yourself. She can't make it. Oh, well, that's life. Robbie Robson called her up, has he? Included her in the World Cup plans. That, plus she's got a steaming bag cold. And she has to be very careful of her <laughs> chest. Oh, well, it's back to the drawing board. I told her she was a right twerp. Do you reckon my friend and colleague Terry's nipped in, do you? I wouldn't know. Too. Yeah, bye bye. I bet Duckworth's been on that blower. Has Terry been on that blower? If only you could talk. Open. I'll have to nip down there myself. Well, I'm putting the kettle on if you want a cup. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I, uh, I may nip round later, you know, when I've uh, done my dishes and that. All right, then. See ya. See ya. Just met Gloria on the landing. Hello. I invited her in for a brew. Mm -hmm. I thought we'd dazzle her with our new flat. Anyway, she said she'd pop round afterwards. But I reckon she's going to wait till she's got you on your own. Well, if you're going out on one of your gigs tonight, I'll be well set up, won't I? I've made my mind up. You're part of the band from now on. We're going to take you on as a roadie. Look, Gloria is just a nice, friendly neighbour. Now, that makes us very lucky. Because you can get some right nutcases, I can tell you. Are you happy, Jen? Yeah. It's a worry, though. Being happy is a worry, eh? It could mean I might never write a really good song. I'll put the kettle on. Well, I should say that uh, 50 is a provisional figure then. I mean, there may be more on the evening. But I imagine you can count heads and charge that as an extra. Oh, of course, Mr. Barlow, no problem. Uh, now, you do understand that this is the 21st? Oh, yes. Uh, what I mean is it's a young people's do, so I hope there's no sort of rules about dress or anything. Well, within limits. Oh, don't panic. I'm not talking about a bunch of weirdos, but there may be a few without ties and so on. <laughs> I think that smart casual wear is quite acceptable here at the Bellstaff. Uh, and then, of course, there's the music. Ah, oh, yes, I was going to mention that. Um, we hold regular dances here, so we do have a regular disc jockey. Uh-huh, I see. And uh, what sort of stuff does he favour? She. Yeah. Oh, middle of the road, I'd say. You know, a bit for the kids, a bit for the mums and dads. Ah. Well, I think I prefer something a touch punkier. <laughs> if that could be arranged. Certainly. <laughs> right, well... I think we might go and have a chat with the catering manager. Okay. Oh, by the way, we do have a fairly firm policy on gate crashing. Oh, well, the people I've invited, there's nobody left to gate crash. <laughs> it's just that we do get the odd sugar daddy type, you know? This being a residential hotel. Out of town businessmen with an eye for the younger ladies, shall we say. Well, that can lead to unpleasantness, so if you should notice anyone any undesirables drifting in, just tip the week to one of our door supervisors. <laughs> if it's Terry you want, he's not here. Hello, cheap and cheerful. Oh, hello, Mrs. Bishop. Yeah, we're thinking of changing the slogan. Expensive and extremely unhelpful. Oh, great. Well, listen, put me chucky egg on and, and butter me hot cross buns. I'll be over in five minutes. All right, bye-bye. Anyone around? I believe he's things. You know, junk and stuff. Yeah. Y yeah, I, I was just looking up. Oh, sorry. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow. Oh, hang on, hang on. There's no rush. Uh, have a shifty. Oh, Tom. What exactly were you looking for? Oh, I'm doing my bedroom up. You know, chucking out all the Mickey Mouse stuff. Doing it my own way. I thought you might have some old washstand or something. Oh, hang on, hang on. You might have dropped Lucky there. I think we brought something in like that last week. Hey, yeah. I say, this could be perfect. Aye, ah, give it a polish, get some new handles, get yourself a water bowl and a jug. <laughs> Great thing in the bedroom. <laughs> uh, you know, better than those uh, vanity units. Um, now, and if you're into those early morning ablutions, open the window, birds singing, get some water from the stream. You can get it from Tesco's now, you know, they bottle it. <laughs> then have a quick swill, and when you're finished, bung it out the window, water the daffodils. Well, down our road, more likely you give their post the quick rinse. <laughs> Still, I do like it. Um, how much? Well, how does a fiver sound? You've got a deal. One thing, no transport. 
Have you not brought your barra? Hey, that's <laughs> a thought. <laughs> no, seriously, my dad's got a barra. I don't live five minutes away. Well, look, um, I'll tell you what, um, my, my tea's ready, uh, can you come back at seven? Okay. Meanwhile, I, I'll give it a dust and, uh, and if you like, I'll, um, I'll help you push it on. Why not? Oh, right. I'll see you then. Yeah, see you. Look at Romeo there, still climbing flaming balconies at his age. Well, I'll be honest, if he'd looked my way, I don't think I'd have said no. You said no to David Atherton, Mark Spots up, Mike Baldwin. Well, he didn't pick his time, did he, Mr Atherton? I hope we're being invaded. Greetings, one and all. And I thought it was going to be a bad night. Looks like a gathering of the clan. Well, you know Peter, I think, and this is Jessica. There you go, the fleet's in, and I stand no chance. I believe this is your ship nowadays. Dead right, Peter. This pub should have passed to me, says a lot about England. <laughs> Peter, I'd like to meet Mike, my husband-to-be. Oh, well, pleased to meet you, Mike. Uh, Dad's in the chair, so if you're sitting in, just shout up, like. Well, it's very kind of you, but I better not. I've had a heavy day. Yeah. You enjoy yourselves, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Now, what are we all having? Uh, well, I'll have a sofa. Oh, sorry, I mean a pint of bitter. Very funny. What about you, Jessica? No, Tracy's knees in her back. Could you stop it? I have a medium one. I don't know about you, Ken, but I can smell a sandal. I'm used to it. <laughs> ah, Susan, saw Mike across the road, did you? Right, well, it's two pints of bitter, a medium white, and... Uh... Oh, a dry martini, please. Back again. Hello. I see it's ready. Yeah, well, it's not Chippendale, but it's uh, fundamentally sound. I hope you're going to keep your promise. I mean, I fetched me barra. You did say you'd wheel it. Well, we have got a van we can rustle up. Well, if you want. I just fancied the barra. We could take turns. Unless it's going to interfere with your plans for the evening. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll wheel your barra through the street, short and narrow. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'll make out your receipt. What name was it? Wagstag, Miz. Tina for short. Thank you. Look, uh, Ms. Wagstaff, uh, I'd been, in, been invited to this rather wonderful 21st birthday party. Here's the invite. Now, as you can see, it states Mr. Watson guest. Now, if I didn't know you were washing your hair or visiting your sick aunt or cleaning out your budgie's cage, I could see you as the kind of beautiful girl I'd like to take to the do. Here's your receipt. Uh, you don't have to sign it, but you can if you Hang want. Hang on a minute. Am I being asked out or what? Uh, you can take it, you're being asked out, yeah. Good. Let's get going then, eh? You can tell me all about the 21st on the way. Blimey. I've only cracked it. And the soap hour continues in just a second on Plus as things get steamy in Emmerdale, whilst over on Breeze now, we're in the court of Judge Joe Brown.